night. What if look? He probably left a, a back door. He, he he probably the raccoon. We should name him by the way. Probably has a, a back door in there. Ralph. He's just thinking. Yeah, Ralph. R- Ralph works for me. Ralph's Ralphie like, the raccoon. He's going to eventually close that door. But there's a lot of cat food in here. I got to find a second way in. That's well, a, and that's they're a good also way to do it. they're really good with their hands. So you're going to tell smart. me you're going to tell me he's not able to just open up that sliding yeah, door got, a little like, bit? Human, little human hands. Yeah, he's he's it's a bad deal. He's lock strategic. It. Emily said to me this morning. She goes, "I think I had the perfect weekend." I'm not going to lie. That in, that intrigued me a little bit. What you don't have to give me the the whole story right now, but it was it one thing that made it perfect no. or a series of things? It was just it was perfect Friday night, perfect Saturday wow. all day, perfect Sunday. I think I'm coming in here a new woman, guys. This is this is a mm. perfect that weekend. It it was. Exactly how Emily would script, script it. Don't out. let Let's us go, rub girl. off on you. Was, <laughs> By the time the show's <laughs> over, amazing. she's like, ah, back to reality. Uh, she's, it's made her a new woman after a can, couple of good days in a row. Sounds I'm, like I'm happy yeah. for you. I'm no, jealous. It's, it's great. It's, it's like a really it's good weekend. Great. No drugs involved. It was just it was just positive, good no, It couldn't have been that good. Then. <laughs> then it was okay. Yeah, I was gonna it was say, all right It could be good. I don't know if it could be the perfect weekend if you didn't have Got to mix in a little bit in there. Absolutely. How about you? Well, first, you. A three-day weekend here for you. Yeah, it was nice. It was nice. Day weekend, you know, just kind of a lot of lot of traveling, a lot, yeah. lot of high school baseball, a lot a lot of that going on. It was a nice three day weekend in Vegas. All of these things. It was freezing cold out there. Oh, very yeah. beautiful, but very cold. And it was the most tame Vegas weekend I've ever had in my entire life. It was <laughs> all high school baseball. Really, mm-hmm. nothing extraordinarily um, debaucherous. Had one great meal out one night, um, and then I got, I got a couple of things that we can get into, namely. The Uber driver that we had yesterday, who you're lucky I'm sitting here right now, because she was far more interested in talking with Susan than not hitting the median at oh, yeah, the yeah, airport, yeah. Yep. which seems like something you'd want to avoid. Does Susan, um, does she feel what's going on there? Or Susan is like, this is a great conversation. Look. Time in a row, she nearly missed the exit to the airport in Las Vegas. Sure, sure. That's There's the, only the, the, just a heads up. <laughs> Only one airport there. Yeah, only yeah. one airport, and it's the size of half the city. There's 48 entrances into the sure. airport, and she kept missing it. Um, Michael thought we were going to die. He's sitting in the back seat with me, like going, that, 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 which, which, "What's she doing?" Yep. So we'll, we'll we'll talk about that. There was some rental car seat. stuff. Um, it was a. It, it's a long story, but okay. y- it, it's, <laughs> yes, you, you're not wrong. Usually, I go to the front. This was uh, there were extenuating circumstances to get me towards the back. So Michael read part of the Bible um, for the first time this uh, weekend on his way to the airport. No, it was a lot of four-letter words. Unless those are, I, it's been a, it's been a minute since I've read that book. But uh, I, unless there's a lot of, are you bleeping kidding me's in the? Because he was at the uh, point like, I'm not going to keep this to myself. Like this lady's going to kill me. I'm 17 years old. I haven't lived my life yet, and this lady's taking a lot me left out here on the uh, on the way to the airport. So there was all of that going on. Uh, there's a Bryce Harper sighting. We we uh, we played at a place where he was in the other team's dugout. I guess his old coach was the coach there. Interesting. Something like that. Super, super good dude to all the little kids around there. So it was That's uh, amazing. It was That's good. awesome. It was good. Didn't win a whole bunch of games, which kind of, you know, what are you going to do? Kind of ruined the... Uh, it was okay. They, 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 won a, they, they played well twice and not so well twice. How about you? How was your weekend? Uh, weekend was good. Uh, no complaints at all after... Uh, you know, Saturday's game, you're kind of like, joke. all right, whatever. What, a joke. what the hell happens from here? But the two two NFL games yesterday, I mean, listen, the first game, the Niners, and I know we'll get into all the details, but it was just unfortunate that you knew there was no shot for the Niners no, because they over. did not have a quarterback in, yeah. in the NFL. Those are important. Might be good to have a quarterback, right? Um, but the night game I thought was really good. You could say questionable this, questionable that. It's 2020 in the fourth quarter, and you're coming down to the final couple of possessions. That was exciting. Uh, but wait, tr- Slee, you, yeah. you teased on Friday that you're going to cook something on Sunday. Yeah, what I was just going to say. So I was, oh, I really? Tried cooking up uh, another dish. Tried something different yesterday. Basically, an uh, entire chicken. A whole chicken. A whole chicken broken up. Was it butchered, or was it in one whole chicken piece it was butchered okay it was butchered and kind of did the whole i, I wanted to to bake it in the oven so okay. did the basically I had some potatoes had some vegetables and was going to put the entire chicken in there and let's just say i got a little work to it wasn't bad but it also wasn't great like my seasoning that i was basically watching on youtube so it was more which the is seasoning my, than the temperature of the chicken because yeah. they cook at different rates the different parts of the bird cook differently so it was more the seasoning okay it was more the seasoning. That's easy to fix. Yeah, it is. I I was a little questioning. Was it under the, or over seasoned? I think over seasoned. Over seasoned. 
Yeah. Brown, you ever use brown sugar? Not in, on chicken, no. So there were a couple recipes where they were require or they were saying brown you sugar to make like a maple chicken kind of deal. I, I to be honest with you, I I didn't feel like it was a part of the mix either. <laughs> but it's like no, if you're going to bake, you got to use brown sugar. I used some Never and then by the time I was done, I was like, all right, I shouldn't use brown I'm sure sugar. You weren't making brownies. Like, <laughs> pretty sure. I like pork. You know, you can make pork a little sweeter, like a, like a like a pulled pork. You put like Dr Pepper, or brown sugar, that stuff, and you make it a little sweeter. It's usually bite. in barbecue things. Yeah. Exactly. Here's the thing. Yeah. It, it's not even that it took over the taste. It was just in my head that I had brown <laughs> sugar on it. I didn't yeah. want brown sugar. On so it. Well, also- then, look, the, a, a recipe. All right, here. A recipe is more of a suggestion than a list of rules. Right, like when it comes to baking, you got to put certain things in certain times, certain temperatures. That's more like chemistry that you have Precise. to do the things in the same way. When it comes to cooking, if you're like brown sugar sounds stupid here, don't put it in. I it was the Bible for me. <laughs> Whatever this woman said on YouTube, I said absolutely. Who, did you? Did you uh, is this a famous chef or just somebody that you just found? No, it's, it's almost actually somewhere than the New York Strip. Right when I cook that, it was. It's not like it's. I mean, these people have a couple million views on sure. their stuff, but are they famous? I don't know who they bad. are. <laughs> like, it could be bad views. I don't know. It could be, like, jokey views. I'm going to need to see that video. I need to know where the brown sugar comes into making I'll show chicken. You. Like, barbecue yeah, I'll chicken, maybe, if you're right. making, like, a sauce to kind of yeah. glaze it with, perhaps. You sure you weren't making barbecue chicken? <laughs> <laughs> like, I've got a, I got a lot of questions. Pretty positive. What Pretty other, positive on what that What other one. vegetables were in the pan? Now, now I want to know what... Brown I, sugar I put, vegetables with their work. I put well, the brown sugar is only on the chicken, just kind of rubbed in a little yeah, but bit. It's gonna melt and it's gonna run it's gonna go. It's gonna do its thing. Uh, what I put? I put uh, I put potatoes. I put broccoli. I put carrots. Um, broccoli. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Uh, put mushrooms. Okay. And just kind of let them let Hang them out. bake. Yeah. Let them cook. I find this interesting. It's like your your Sunday game day meals are are not what I do. Like I, my friends and I, we watch the games together. We had just a bunch of fried food. So we had pizza like, wings. We had mozzarella sticks. Sure. We, had, we had fried mac and cheese bites. We had uh, pigs in a blanket. We had like chips and salsa. I didn't have a whole roast chicken. Speaking of mozzarella it's, it's sticks, well, on top of that, this doesn't help either. I was also, I I pretty much cooked for the during the first game. Okay, right. Take the iPad, put it in the kitchen. You don't miss a play, which is actually really nice. Like wherever you go, just gotta take it with you. The second game, first half I watched at home, entire third quarter at the gym, entire third quarter at the gym. I you got left at halftime to go to the gym. Left at halftime to go to the gym, and then third quarter, probably fourth quarter, about six minutes left. I'm you working and I my way back. Sports very differently, very differently, <laughs> just very, very, very differently. differently. I, I don't know what to tell you. you. Can't that, sit for I, two I, whole games. I, my, my my brain is I now can't. locked into that. You left in halftime of the good game, but that's that's another thing that will. we'll Did you walk to the gym? Time. I watched. I couldn't. It was raining, sprinkling oh, just oh. enough to where I couldn't. Uh, I watched the entire. I was watching the entire game. I believe you. I just it's while I'm at the I, gym. It's, it's confusing. But you me. were cooking. You were working yeah. out. The cooking like... part I get because you can kind of do two things at once. I guess you can work be out as well. Was it, was it cardio? Gotta, was, gotta it, was it weightlifting? All like, cardio. Okay, but the yeah, game you yeah. start. There's all day Sunday morning, like to get your workout. Incredibly you lazy <laughs> Sunday morning. I guess so. It is a Bud Light reaction Monday on seven ten. We're reacting to everything that went down on NFL Championship weekend. It is presented by Bud Light. Make Bud Light your game day beer. Bud Light, easy to drink. Drink, easy to enjoy. Must be 21 or older. Please enjoy responsibly. One game was a dog, and the other game was really good and got really stupid at the end because of a very, very bad mistake. That's coming up next. It's Travis Lee, 17. Hey, Laker fans. John Ireland here. Have you downloaded the new ESPN LA app? You got to get this thing. It's great. You can get Travis and Sliwa, Mason and Ireland, Sedano and Cap, and all of our Lakers talk with Slee right in the palm of your hand. You're just one tap away from everything Lakers. You could even win Lakers tickets. React to the Lakers on ESPN LA app. Download the new ESPN LA app in the App Store or on Google Play.
It is the show that begins nine hours of L.A. sports talk all day long. Each weekday, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., this is Travis at Sliwa on 710 ESPN. <laughs> Good job, Taylor. Um, you, you, Emily, you said something a minute ago. Uh, this kind of goes back. When was the last show we did together? Was it Wednesday? Wednesday. I think it was a, a factor cap where... What was it, Shakira? Somebody was eating her jam, and that's yes. how she knew her husband or her it's, boyfriend was running it's, around. It's her hus- There was no jam left in the house, and oh yeah, 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 jam. right. So, and, and remember, we were talking about how would you notice something in your house that made you go, "Wait, something's up," right? Yeah. You, you said something that reminded me of this weekend. So, we fly out to Vegas on Saturday morning, or excuse me, on Friday morning. And we're planning on going to a nice dinner on Friday night, the three of us, Susan, myself, and and Michael. But Michael has something to do at a hospital in Vegas, so he's not going to be done until about 7.30 or so. So Mm -hmm. we make a reservation for 8.30. So it's going to be a late night, right? Much later than the three of us typically eat dinner. So we get into town at about 2 because he's got a thing coming up that afternoon and we're kind of in no man's land when it comes to eating. Like you don't want to eat a big thing because we're going yeah. out tonight and all, and all that stuff. And Emily, just, she was talking about all the fried stuff that she had. We go down to the coffee shop in the hotel we're staying in just to get a little bite of something, just mm-hmm. to kind of get through the next five or six hours. Right. And Susan says to me, do you want to get some mozzarella sticks? And I went, wait, what? Yes. What? I've known just her. Something light. Just something real quick here. No, no, it's not even, you're right about that. I've known her since we were in the seventh grade together. Mm -hmm. Never in her life has she suggested, (laughs) let's get something super fried and greasy and Mm -hmm. terrible to eat in the middle of the day. Never once. I went, what did you say? (laughs) She's like, well, let's let that, that that just sounds really good. And I'm like. Yeah, sure. I, I would love to. That sounds really good. And they brought out enough mozzarella sticks to feed the Dallas Cowboys. Yes. It was it was it was so and now did they, you do work? They were like this. They they weren't the oh, little. Geez. They weren't like the size of your finger, right? They were like the size of a garden hose. They, they were like My this gosh. big around. Like one of them was like okay, that's more than enough. And I like to eat that stuff. We ate this entire thing, or they brought this entire thing. It had to have I don't know ten or twelve of them. We ate three. We ate like one and a half <laughs> each. Brought them back up to the room for Michael. He's like, no, <laughs> those are Michael's way trying to go big. get a uh, fillet at, at a nice. It's exactly steakhouse. what we did yeah. do. It was. Uh, it was so. Did that she regret added to the list? No, because we didn't eat them. Like we had, we literally had <laughs> one and a half each. It was so much melted, gooey cheese. It was like just way too what, much. What did so she? Funny. What did she say about? Like when you asked her, like this I, is random. I, I, you know, like you do a double take where you kind of go, wait, wait, what? I did like a quadruple take. It was wait, did you, you, you just. Did, you didn't ask to wait mozzarella sticks. Are, are you okay? Are you feeling all right? <laughs> like this is not like usually. It's um, I'll get a a little salad or maybe maybe we'll get something light like a a, 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 a I don't know like not even a soup like a little sashimi thing. Just a couple of little yeah. bites of something. Not that you're gonna get that at a coffee shop in Vegas, but it was the exact opposite of everything she'd ever ordered. I'll take in her espresso life. and your uh, <laughs> it was finest nice. sashimi. <laughs> it was it was a giant That's pile of mozzarella sticks so, and they weren't very good what's funny to me about <laughs> mozzarella sticks is that like if i just ate six cheese sticks Again, you'd be worried about me. Like you'd be like, "Okay, cold cheese sticks, that's gross." But if I fry them and dip them in batter, it's all of a sudden it's normal. okay. Yeah, no, it's yeah. crazy. But the, I love mozzarella sticks. I uh, so do I. I, I. I don't dislike them. These were the, these what were. What coffee a bit shop much. had mozzarella sticks? It was like a diner. It was like oh, a okay, casino okay. diner thing where it's open twenty four hours. Yeah, they got right. everything all the time. I want to go. Next morning, we got pancakes from the very same place. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot going on. There was a lot going got on. Some mozzarella sticks on the side, guys. Um, so how much of what happened last night is exclusively on Joseph Osai, right? Because he's the guy that hit Mahomes late. He was he was a full two steps out I of know. bound. It was I a know. terrible penalty. Mm-hmm. Um, it took what would have been a very long field goal and made it a moderately d- distance field goal. Made it, it went, legit. Went you, from got, like 40, you got a real shot. From 60 to 45. It mm-hmm. went from he probably won't make it to almost he certainly will. Mm-hmm. There's still eight seconds left on the clock. So even if he doesn't get hit right there, I think the Chiefs still probably run a play. 
I get that Osai screwed that up. It was a terrible yeah. penalty, and he's going to have to deal, deal with that for the rest of his career. I get it. The problem, Al, was the damn punt beforehand. What, what, in what universe do you punt the ball down the middle of the field on mm -hmm. a line drive mm -hmm. and give this dude a chance to, to bust one coming back? It was a 29-yard punt return. Mm -hmm. Punt that thing to the side, get it out of bounds, or at the very worst, kind of pin him in the corner where he can't get a long return. And I get it. It's Mahomes, and he's dangerous, and he probably finds a way to do it regardless. But he didn't have to do anything. They, they were in field goal range by the time that he was done returning that punt, essentially. It was that's the play that I don't understand why people aren't screaming and yelling about. It was a terrible, it's a terrible punt. Yeah. It was poorly covered. It was a bad decision. And it gave them 30 yards of field position that they never should have had. So I, I, I'll go back to this. I, I, I'll say that there was a point in that game, two minutes left, Cincinnati's got the ball. They got a couple timeouts in their pocket, mm -hmm. too. And the way Tony Romo set it up, too, Tony Romo's sitting there and he's talking about, here it is, a chance to go to the Super Bowl. Joe Burrow again at Arrowhead. You got the time, you got the ball, and the game is locked 2020. Yeah. In my head at that moment, I'm like, damn, I think the game is over, right? I even before your, your punt. And to think that in, in regulation, that Kansas City is A, going to force them to punt, B, going to get a punt return good enough to just give them a shot to go for a field goal. C, end up getting a penalty after Patrick Mahomes runs to give them 15 really on top of it. Of the day, too. Right, to give them 15 on top of it. Yeah. And then to kick a field goal. There was no scenario in my eyes that the kid... The fact that that game wasn't going to overtime, I couldn't, I couldn't figure out a scenario that the game... It's either the Bengals are going to win or the game is going to go to OT and you kind of take your chances there. I, I I get the last play, and, and it did, in a sense, cost them the game. The because aside penalty. The aside penalty. I get that. I understand it. But I, I I don't know. You know, all that hype around the Bengals coming into the game. Patrick Mahomes playing on a, on a, on a was, bummed ankle. He was hurt. He was hurt. He yeah. was definitely hurt. Never really felt like Cincinnati was putting up – putting up enough pressure to get to Mahomes just from like that specific game plan. The Bengals were playing from behind the entire game, which was mind-boggling to me. I, I don't think it came down to that one play. I think if you play that game all over again and, and it's the same exact scenario, I would have thought Cincinnati was the team that's up but, seven eh, points, ten points, something along those I lines. I didn't feel like that. I, I that be, Because for all the reasons that you said, they had multiple opportunities to take the lead. They never did. Mm -hmm. right? They, they kind of hung around, and when Kansas City would extend a little bit, they'd catch them. But they never, they never, to your point, when they got the ball, what was it two twenty left? When they they had two timeouts, yeah. two minute warning. I think they were on the seven yard line, mm -hmm. and and it was one of those. All right, if Joe Burrow is the guy that we think he is, mm -hmm. this is where he's going to go do what he's going to do. They're going to drive down got that there. first first down. I think yep. they're they're going to they're going to kick a field goal. They're going to score a touchdown, and they're going to have no time left on the clock. They're going to. I thought that they were likely to win the game at that point. But they didn't. The, the drive really didn't do much. They got it out to about the 30-yard line or so. They, they were never really in any threat of, of doing anything. And when they punted with 40 seconds left, that's when I'm like, this, is, this game's over. The, Patrick Mahomes does this. You left him. He did it with 13 seconds against the Bills last year, right? You give that guy. We talked about it against the Chargers a couple of times this year. Nope, way too much time. That's a minute and a half. He, nope, this is, this is not going to happen for him. And then with the field goal return or the uh, punt return, it was I, I Cincinnati played okay. They didn't play bad, but they didn't weren't very good yesterday either. They were just kind of I agree. in the middle. And I think that's more of a testament to, to what Kansas City was doing because they had a couple of big plays. The one to chase to get that big first down was a third and fifteen or whatever it was. But they never really had them on the run. They they had a couple of good drives. It never felt to me like they had that game on lock. I thought they had a really good chance when they got it back to start that drive, but it didn't go anywhere. It's not like they got on the, they didn't get on the other side of the 50-yard line. But Trevor, that, that, that's actually exactly my point. My point is, is that I was surprised it was kind of laid up for Cincinnati coming into the game. Mahomes, mm -hmm. Mahomes is not healthy. He's clear that you could tell even in the first half – by the time you got to the second half, I'm like, this dude's limping on every single play. Whatever you can kind of pretend in the first 30 minutes of the game, you wrap it up, you do whatever. Um, KC never really was in that moment where, hey, they're down seven or they're down 10 and all the pressure's on the Chiefs. Chiefs, 
it, since he was the one trying to come back the entire time, when they up, uh, Casey went up ten, I think it was right, thirteen to three, and Chiefs or and since he responded, give them all the credit. They did a, they had a, I'm sorry, you just brought up a thought that when they were up ten points, thirteen to three, and they got the ball back with like what was it, two minutes to go in they the first half. They screwed up I, on that drive. I know Dude, what you're talking about. Run the clock out. Run the clock run the, out and they, go get a field goal. They they had three incomplete passes in mm-hmm. a row, and they gave them. They were going to get the ball to start the second half. Yep. Take a ten point lead into the locker room. That was a huge. I I hated, I hated that play calling. I yeah. know exactly what you're talking about. I was like, wait a minute here. If this game comes down to you had a chance to just go run the clock, number one, um, but number two, at the absolute worst, let's say it just kind of ends the half right there. They didn't since he got the ball, drove all the way down, almost got a touchdown, yeah. ended up with a field goal and took it from there. Th- that was Patrick Mahomes' finest moment. I know that he's won MVPs. He might win another one this year. I know he's won the Super Bowl. I know he's been to another Super Bowl. But th- the Mahomes that we've seen, was different than the Mahomes that we got last night. The Mahomes that we've seen up until this point was, I can't believe that guy made that throw. I can't believe he escaped right there. I can't believe that he threw it with his offhand. I can't believe that he threw a hook shot. I can't believe he threw it underhand. That it's all of these, that was an amazing feat of athleticism. This was just the dude being the toughest you-know-what on the damn field. This was, I can barely walk. This was, I'm going to run when I absolutely have to. When it when the game was on the line, he put his head down and ran and got to the spot, drew that penalty and everything else. I'm not sure that wasn't his finest moment. Not statistically, right? We've seen him throw for 500 yards and six touchdowns and all that kind of business. But that was, I'm not just the most talented guy. I'm one of the toughest guys. And that guy over there is really good. That's a really good team. We didn't, he had no weapons at the end of the game mm-hmm. other than Kelsey. That's right. We all haven't even his, mentioned that. All of his guys were gone mm-hmm. other than, they were doubling and tripling Kelsey and why not? Mm-hmm. And he still found a way to get it done. That that wasn't just, wait, did he just throw that ball 70 yards on a line into a window this big? That was, I'm on one leg mm-hmm. and I'm finding a way to get it done. I was now, incredibly impressed. Listen, there, there are times, and I, I felt this last night watching the game, there are times times where there's a moment that you're watching one of the greatest at what they do and like you said sometimes those moments look like 60 points in a game right. sometimes those moments look like four or five touchdowns sometimes those moments is um somebody with a no hitter through seven yesterday was a unique moment but it, it was it kind of almost even raised my respect for Patrick Mahomes oh, yeah. because this wasn't like you said This is in the AFC Championship game. This is, I cannot run. I'm going to limp wherever I go, yet I'm still going to find a way to move the ball just enough to keep a drive going or just enough to get another first down. And and even if it's three points or it's seven points, it was uh, that was an incredible moment. They scored 23 points, and it might have been his greatest game. You're right. This wasn't a game where they, they you know, it's that, a great point. That, that Bills game two years or last year. It's like, okay, third. This was a grinded out, no weapons, on one leg, high ankle sprain, and he still found a way to get it done without d- lighting up the scoreboard. It was, it was super impressive. Well, I, I, I impressed. hope these two weeks are, um, I, I hope as healthy as he can be because all, all you're asking for. And I think whether it was last night's game between Cincy and Casey or was the game prior, to not have everybody healthy, especially at that quarterback position, it just completely changes everything. That other game was a joke. It was like watching football from the 1930s. It was just, it was completely ridiculous. And plus, um, we got to talk about it. We got to talk about what happened in Boston because as bad as that call was, much like the Osai penalty, there were things leading up to it that were nearly as inexplicable, including a foul. Up three with a guy going for a layup, which, yeah, that makes a whole lot of sense. It's coming up next. It's Travis Lee, 710. Hey, Laker fans, John Ireland here. Have you downloaded the new ESPN LA app? You got to get this thing. It's great. You can get Travis and Sliwa, Mason and Ireland, Sedano and Cap, and all of our Lakers talk with Slee right in the palm of your hand. You're just one tap away from everything Lakers. You could even win Lakers tickets. React to the Lakers on ESPN LA app. Download the new ESPN LA app in the App Store or on Google Play.
minutes, around 1045, it's the Monday edition of Ask Slee. Ask Slee. Don't miss it. Coming up in minutes this hour right here on Travis and Sliwa on 710 ESPN. Indeed, we've got an Ask Slee coming up about 10 minutes from right now. I am uh, starting the process of doing our picks out, and I okay. honestly – did the Mahomes go – or uh, Burrow go over or under, Emily? I got to double-check yeah, that. Yeah, double-check that. What, how, what was the over-under? 273 and a half. 270. Was it really? He got 270. So, okay, so that's under. Um, by the way, of our four over-unders, all four unders hit. All four. Yep, super that's lame. Right. Yeah. Super, super <laughs> uncool. And keep, fun. keep saying that. Anti fun. And we'll just not get points for doing that. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. I already was losing. Yeah. Well, let's see. Let's see. Travis had under, under, under. I took one over. I took uh, one over too. You at the top. You had it yep. at six. Purdy. Yeah. We'll we'll do that coming up in a bit. I think you. I think you had a good week, and I think I had a bad week. So I think you're gonna separate a little bit because I had. I think I had Cincinnati at the top. That didn't work. out I'm so waving good. the white flag. It's fine. Yeah. Well, your your flag already was did. already in your back pocket <laughs> to start the week. <laughs> From wild card 11, weekend, I'm, I'm bad. Eleven points. Along Taylor, there. very quiet over there. I like that. Taylor's. I have doing no idea what's going on. Did I, did, I, did I do well or what? I I, I don't know. I haven't added it up yet. But uh, is Taylor, he's not sure, man. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, well, let's for, get to it. No, Come on. Let's, hold on. I'm just uh, this. That hits. Um, that's out. That's out. That no, Taylor, you were terrible. You got uh, uh, you got five points out of potential twenty one. <laughs> <laughs> so, better than zero. You well, asked. You did better than me. <laughs> we'll see. Well, we may we may just exclude them for the Super Bowl week. Just be the two of us. <laughs> just the two of us. Hey, down to two. What are you gonna do? So what else? You had mozzarella sticks. What else made your weekend so great? All right. So Friday night, I went to dinner with my uh, friends at Pasta Sisters in Culver City, and usually like something like this, like would make me anxious like there was like a really long line my friends were running late like they were like 30 minutes late because they just didn't understand traffic and whatever fine and i was there on time but i waited my line and i had a good time i was just like a good company to myself and we had they got there on time we had dinner we had this mushroom cream pasta sauce homemade pasta a little glass of wine like it was like a lovely evening and we like me and my friends hadn't caught up in a bit so like it was just like a really lovely night of, these like, are local friends yeah of like four hours of talking and great conversation wow. and then uh the next day i uh went to spin class and then I was like, it was, the weather was beautiful, so like, I'm going to walk to the, to the farmer's market. Damn right my, you are. My, my uh, spin class. I'm like some people we know. <laughs> it's like uh, half a mile away from um, the Silver Lake Farmer's Market, so I walked to the Silver Lake's Farmer's Market. I had a wonderful luck get? there, so I got a baguette, a big baguette from yeah. the French uh, place. I got uh, pita bread, sticky sauce. I got some homemade pasta. Uh, I, I spent a tidy fortune, whatever, and then I got <laughs> and I got three CDs because um, my Bluetooth has been working in my car as well. So I got like um, Fluid Mac, Mamas and Papas, and Red Hot Chili Peppers on CD. And then I went to um, get Sidecar Donuts at oh uh, the Grove. And then I went to see a movie. And what did you see? <laughs> and saw Babylon Pool. again. No, I did not see it. I'm, I saw Infinity Pool. <laughs> Honestly. I would not recommend. It's it's creepy. It's weird. But I enjoyed myself. If people were clapping in the theater, it was a good time. And then I went home and I watched two movies with my roommates um, of oh movies God. that I love. Mm -hmm. It was The Social Network and Florida Project because like my roommate hasn't wa hadn't watched it, and I chatted with her. Social Network, time. solid, great movie. Yeah, it's good. And then yeah. third on... movie by the day, <laughs> by the way, on that day well, that keep, was her third don't, movie. Don't worry, I'm yeah. keeping track. And then on Sunday, <laughs> on Sunday, uh, my roommate and I. Uh, he was like, oh, he's actually moving out at the end of this month, and so, like, in two days. And so him and I got breakfast in the morning, and it was a lovely bagel. I actually got an extra bagel that I ate this morning for breakfast. And then I, um, we watched the first episode of the new show called um, Poker Face, and then I went and drove to my other friend's house and watched the games. Lovely company. We had all the fried foods. We had a good <laughs> good time. And then we wa I watched the new episode of The Last of Us, which was Amazing. amazing and then on the way home i like listen to a podcast about that episode and then you get music underneath <laughs> and then i <laughs> watched the episode again with my roommate yep um wait you watched this tv show you just watched you rewatched it yeah because he was like oh i want to watch it slower I was like, something slower <laughs> and then i was like uh, i want to be with you to watch it because it was such a good episode i need to watch it again to get like the nuances in it 
Anyway, this is literally, if I could draw off a weekend, this is my favorite weekend. I had a lot of Emily time. I had a lot of friend time. You I are watched, the seventh caller in the queue. I watched three movies. I watched a couple episodes of TV. I was very present. Alan, you would like this. I was very present in the moment. Okay. I was I was soaking it all in. And this is literally my favorite weekend I've had in a long time. And I, and I did not get much sleep last night, but I wake up well rested. So I'm having a great day. How many movies and TV shows are in your perfect weekend? <laughs> now, <Zero>. um, <laughs> uh, full weekend. Let me count Friday night all the way through to Sunday night. If I got two in, that'd be amazing. That's a lot. That'd be amazing. Yes. You got the fried foods and all of that uh, friend time and all the football games. There were two football and, games and, on I Sunday. I was going to say, there were two football movie. games on Sunday. <laughs> and a mi- great food. Like, I had the fried food, which is not great food, quote unquote, but it was Well, I saw fun. that. I went to Pasta food. Sisters Yelp right now. That's so that's, good. That looks amazing. It was amazing. amazing. It was, and it was relatively cheap, like, which is nice. And then uh, also do an amazing count for me. Obviously, I'm, I'm saying it too many times. <laughs> and then the bagels are my favorite bagel. One of my favorite bagels. Do in we LA. need the music back? Were they amazing? I don't know where we are. They were right amazing now. bagels. And I got a, a Mexican Coke, too. I got like go. one of the uh, Mexican bla- Coke's hard to beat. last bottle Coke. Oh. Yeah, that's hard to beat. And okay, I also. What type of bagel was it? <laughs> it was a. An amazing Amazing one. Yes. It was a bacon, egg, and cheese with a... Uh, oh, you got a sandwich. Well, it's a bagel sandwich. No, but that's... Yeah, but the way you described, yeah, yeah. I thought it was just like bagel as well. Are you just kidding well, me? With like, jam no. on okay, it. Y'all well, are I, LA bagel people. No, no because I'm, I eat bagels just right, a bagel. Right, right. I will Come eat on. just a bagel. A bagel, a bagel is great. If you just said, hey, I had a bagel friend. and this is what I had on top of it, Sorry, I just feel like that was information you didn't share to us. Sorry, in the Northeast, we just call it a bagel and you assume it's a sandwich, but whatever. It's it's, it's a bagel. Wait, hold on. Let me so check. What, what, uh, we're in California. Okay, no, but wait, wait, you, wait. You, what you happens? So people don't just eat a bagel? <laughs> what if they just nobody just grabs a bagel Sometimes and eats it? Sometimes you can just I, have a bagel. But if, if I go into the store and said, like, a bagel, I'm getting a bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich. <laughs> Likely. Uh, no, I don't think that's true. I'm, but I'm almost positive that's not true. Sandwich is bacon, egg, and cheese, avocado, <laughs> chive, cream cheese, and red onion. Pickled red onion. It's a really bagel. Good. Yes, it was a bagel. It's a, uh, meal. It's a brunch. That's a good <laughs> it's brunch. It, was, it sounds good. It was hefty. Yeah. It was that's hefty. A, and then, uh, yeah, no, it was, it was a great job. It was a great time. Good for you. I'm glad you had a nice Perfect. weekend. That I would pre- like I would have preferred. Like. More movies? More TV shows? I would have preferred more details. I would have preferred that we got can, a little can, more details. I have that. so many details. <laughs> Damn, that's a okay. good weekend. That's a great weekend. I got one for you. I know that LeBron got hosed, and I could give a damn that the NBA feels bad about it. Oh, we've had some sleepless nights. Shut up. By the way, are they? Shut I, up. I'm not kidding. Was were they trolling? I, I think they it, were trolling it, it people. Felt like it, it, there's nothing. You can't say what they just said. How is that a real quote? How is that a quote? <laughs> that they had sleepless nights. What are they doing? It's just stupid. say that. Hey, we missed the call. We missed it. Sorry. It's. It was a terrible missed call. Gut wrenching for us. The the, the 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 crazy part is too sleep. They, the three referees on the court all knew they missed it because LeBron went insane yep. afterwards, as he should have. Yep. But if you feel you got it right, you tee him up for acting like that. And they didn't. They let him do his thing because they all know, yeah, we kind of blew that one. And they did, and it was a terrible call, and yep. they got rogered. They, they did. Mm-hmm. Anybody want to explain to me why before that, that when Jalen Brown's driving to the hoop, down three. Yep. Patrick Beverly is within 100 miles of him. Mm-hmm. Give him the damn layup. Mm-hmm. Let him lay it in. I get it. LeBron got ripped off. Terrible, terrible call. It never should have come to that if Patrick Beverly knows the game. So this is what we talked about with John and Michael. Like, let him go to the hoop. Don't give him three. Don't let him have They give him three the old-fashioned way. He hits him on top of the head as he's going to the rim. I, th- that was the part to me. I get it. LeBron got screwed. Yep. It never should have come to that. So, by the way... Uh, not to cause more anger towards Laker fans, they let him shoot a three again. Lakers were up three, and they did the same thing where the game plan was not to foul in that final possession I, when they, you were up three. Hey, look. And, and let me let me go. Let me just go a little further. Pat Bev missed a free throw on that side. Yep. Should have been up four. Yep. All right, they're up three. Yep. Al Horford um, gets a clear look at a three. Hits, hits the, the side, side of, of the, the backboard. backboard. Yeah. Jalen Brown gets it. Pat Bev. Let him let him put the ball back. Pat in. Bev. What are you doing? What are you doing? Okay, and, but even even like there, there were so many little things before that final play with Braun. The listen, I, I I'm I'm with you. I don't like to kind of 
you know, complain about refereeing and, oh, my gosh, this should happen. That Unless it's just so obvious. It's egregious. Why are the Celtics get twice as many free throws as the Lakers? Yeah, really? Terrible. They don't have a big man. So you're going to tell me they get 39 free throws because – because what? Because Al Horford's their big man. You know, usually, typically, you got somebody in the paint. Lakers outscored them points in the paint. But that final play you're talking about, Pat Bev made no sense. That listen, the the final play, um, I don't really know how to describe it to you. Why do you have a baseline referee who's and the worst part about the replay? He's just staring exactly where he's supposed to be staring. Doesn't see the foul. Lakers end up getting there. You know what's in overtime, which we've seen a couple different times. Yeah, they, they don't got that. games to you know give away. Still in what, that 12th one. or thirteenth place. Thirteenth place. Yeah, it, it's look. I, I'm not dismissing those guys not blowing the whistle there because it was a terrible, terrible miss call. It, it was, but incompetence is incompetence, right? You mm-hmm. can't argue. In it, it is. It was. It was a terrible decision. Why did Beverly? foul there like that that's that's just not knowing what the hell's going on Mm -hmm. right that that's not knowing the why do you guard the possession just don't guard exactly just defend the three-point line anything that's over my head you can have it you can't beat me with a two-point basket Mm -hmm. you can't do it and that there he is he's reaching he's trying to defend he creates a foul that's a coaching mistake it's a player mistake it's a situational mistake it's all it's just representative of where they are with all of these little things yeah. you guys are not good enough to have these kind of mental lapses it was a terrible decision. I, I have a difficult time there was a game against Dallas where they didn't foul Luca and then you could have made a case that Troy Brown Jr. got fouled mm-hmm. right that final possession I have a difficult time in this case Ev, but I have a difficult time looking back a play and I have a difficult time doing it because when something is that blatant and obvious, yeah, you got to do your job. <laughs> don't foul. What That's I'm, as blatant and obvious as the other you're one. You're not wrong there. But you got to do your job. Of course And you there did. was nothing in that play to indicate that Braun didn't get hacked. Of, of course he did. And, and, and listen, if, if, they, if the Lakers, let's say Braun took a 12-foot fadeaway jumper and there was no foul, they went to overtime and lost, then I would highlight as much more as possible the Pat Bev but I don't know what those idiots were doing in the final possession of the game. It was terrible. I, but I just would like to have the idiot that's on my team not be one. Just stay away. This, this, is, this is something we've talked about I don't know how many times. The only thing that can beat you is a three-point play. He's driving to the hoop. Walk him there and let him put the ball in the basket and take it out of bounds, throw it down to the other end of the court and win the game. What would you have done if Horford hits the three and they didn't foul? Oh, that was the same thing again, right? Yeah. I mean, it's it's the exact same argument, just it's a different type of stupidity. Mm-hmm. One is a player. Yeah, I don't, the think, other they're gonna, one is I don't think they're going to foul. I would love to know why not. I would love to know Somebody why Somebody keeps saying it's the percentages, and, and I don't know what percentages they're referring to. I don't know if they're talking about their percentages out there that it's a, let's say, 35% you're going to hit the three. But what's the percentages of somebody hitting a free throw, missing the second one on purpose, them getting the rebound and putting two? I would guess putting it's less it. than 35%. I mean, without knowing, it certainly seems like it is. Ask Slee. Coming up next, it's Travis Slee, 710.
up your Monday. Time for a Monday edition of Ask Slee. We do it each Monday, Wednesday, Friday around this time. Ask Slee. Ask Slee. And Ask Slee this morning is presented by Harris Resort SoCal. Find your funner state of mind with a visit to Harris Resort SoCal. Voted best resort in funner California. From dining to unwinding, you'll find fun around every corner. Learn more at HarrisSoCal.com. Time for Ask Slee. All right, let's start with Christopher Holmes here. If you want to get in on the phone, you know how to do it. 877-710-ESPN. Chris writes, um, I don't know which is better. He's asking you here. Taylor saying his raccoon was crockpot sized or Trav saying his mozzarella sticks were garden hose sized. Which is better? I think the crockpot size. I agree. Um, which I, I don't want to downplay the garden hose size because you could have said it's this size pipe at Home Depot. No. And and so I was like we're on the long along the same path here. Neither you and I know how to do anything around the house yet we're 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 Remember making we both, comparisons we like that. Everybody knows a hose. But the crock pot, this is why the crock pot was a better example cuz I don't know how many different people on Friday when that story was being retold kept saying he's comparing it to a crock pot and now we all had the perfect size of how big that raccoon was. I think you're accurate. Your crock pot is bigger than mine because that crock pot that you or the crock pot we have in our house, that raccoon looked like it was twice the size of the one that we have. Okay, what would be a proper a microwave? That's yeah. Yeah. Getting closer. Getting closer. That's that's yeah, the outside, the exterior, not the little interior part. He wouldn't right, fit yeah. in there. That guy was <laughs> Ralph, is that what you named try. him sleep? Yeah, Ralphie. Trav, with all of the rain, does Slee keep saying he's going to get new wiper blades but never does? Hashtag ask Slee. It's a good question. Um, I'm at a situation right now with my windshield wipers. Very simple. When it's done, there's a streak. There's just like an obvious streak, and it's incredibly annoying. Does it wipe the water off, though, when they're Wipes going? the water off, okay. but actually it's more for when it's dry out and you just want to kind of clean off the windshield. I don't know how you are with a streak down your windshield. It's annoying. I I can't focus on anything else. I just I see a streak. I need new win- I need new wipers. I, I it's one of those things that you don't realize how bad the wipers on your car are until you get into a car that has good ones or new ones because all of a sudden it's like whoop whoop what and it's the hell is this? Perfectly clear. My car just uh, Susan's car actually just kind of smears the water all over the front. It doesn't take any of it off. Just moves it left and then it's back right. It doesn't. It never actually flicks it off. It actually the saves the water. It's 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 like a reservoir. <laughs> it's, it's it's the I hate it. And I'm like all right, that's it. It's, I'm going to get new wipers. No. And then the next day it's nice. I'm like, oh, it doesn't matter. Yeah, today. No, now it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter today. Yeah, it doesn't matter now. Drives me crazy. Uh, <laughs> it's Saturday morning at Casa de Slee. What is 10 year old Alan Slee was serial cartoon combo? All right. So I know I went after Winnie the Pooh that one time, but Winnie the Pooh was my guy. That was On my Saturday guy. mornings? Yeah. Okay. Actually, I think it aired. I had to have been a little younger. I had to probably have been seven or eight. What, when did Animaniacs come out? I was a. Big on Animaniacs. Remember that? I don't remember that. You don't you, remember you Animaniacs? Remember, I think that the age gap between us, I think, prevented okay. me from An- knowing Animaniacs that. Animaniacs was, uh, was legit as well. But Winnie the Pooh. And then Serial, I mean, Lucky Charms. Um, would, you, would Mom and Dad Sliwa load you guys up with Serial? We, we were cereal? very unhealthy oh, growing okay. up. And they did dog. And they didn't kind of know it. I, we yeah. would actually have, this is the worst thing ever. In the Middle Eastern culture, you drink tea like crazy. Okay. Okay. They always drink tea. So they have um, just kind of a container with just full of sugar. And you add as much as much sugar as you want to your tea. Bro, in my cereal, I just got a couple On top of, of Lucky Charms. On top That's of Lucky awesome. Charms. No, it was- How are you not a diabetic? It was awful. <laughs> and all I tasted was just pure sugar. And I was like, grit? no, I'm just getting the morning started, guys. Yeah, Did you guys have like the sugar cereals in your house as a kid? No, wasn't allowed. Me, we very rarely. We weren't really cereal people, but very we would have uh, we would have name brand cereal. Yeah, like we would to get a box of uh, like Frosted Flakes. Oh, was Frosted a big Flakes deal. was definitely was big, in the house. Yeah. Corn Flakes, Rice Krispies, Cheerios. I told you, I'd call my dad there. and dad. Hey, uh, Parker's <laughs> over. Can you bring some Snickers, some Reese's, and some Doritos? <laughs> we just want to get some get some protein in before we go to bed. Super Friends and Scooby Doo. Those were the two things on Saturday morning. It's all Superman cartoons and Scooby Doo. I'd get up like uh, freaking 6 a.m. in the morning to catch Winnie. (laughs) 
What's the one thing you cannot let go of but probably should? CDs, DVDs, bell bottoms, fondue, the botched Chris Paul Lakers trade. Hashtag Ask Slee. Uh, all right, let me think personal items here. Um, you know, BS stuff as, as a kid that you just don't want to get rid of. Like, the this might be a small one, but when I went back into that box at my house and got those uh, those basketball cards, I have a couple folders. I have a couple binders with, like, really well-done cards, all that stuff. There's just something about keeping stuff when you were a kid. So yeah, I, sure. I think, do I need it? No. Do I even know what's in some of these boxes? I genuinely don't. But I've kept some, even stuff here at ESPN. You know, we've been here for a handful of years. There's been things that I've just kind of kept in a box and I probably won't get rid of. All right, here's John in Huntington Beach. You have to wear one for a year. Okay. Pants too tight or shirt too tight? That's funny. Um, I go pants too tight. I think I agree. Why? I don't know what it is. Like, I feel like with pants, they might stretch out a little bit. We might get a little breathing room as we go. I'm very uncomfortable with a tight shirt. I agree. You know what I mean? I, I Yes. So but I, the reason I'm curious is because for me, the reason I don't like a tight shirt is it makes me feel super fat. Because it's tight around the middle, I feel... No, you're right. It makes me feel... Even, yeah. even though I am heavy, it makes me feel really, yeah. really heavy. Tight pants don't make me feel like a fat ass. A tight shirt makes me feel like I'm a disgusting monster. I'm kind of with you on that. Yeah. The, the tight shirt is a complete different... It's a good question. It's a I mean, Taylor question. doesn't have the... You know, Taylor's well, walking that's, around. But you're not overweight. and and But uh, you're going to kind of have the same thing. No, yeah. you're not overweight. You're not overweight like most of us. You know what I mean? Like most Americans walk around like, him, him, him. You'd be like, no, not him. <laughs> we, Me, Travis, you guys are fine. Slee, you're running five miles on game day eating chicken breast. I think you're good. I'm not running Brown five sugar miles. chicken breast, by the way. <laughs> right, exactly. So I looked it back up. I, I looked it back. I'm like, did they really say brown sugar? No, they said it. They had bre- so brown strange. sugar on the chicken breast. That's a new one. Uh, I love Emily's recap of her perfect weekend. Can we get your perfect weekend? Hashtag ask Slee. All right, perfect weekend. Wake up on a Saturday morning. Go for a hike. Me can and I, the girl I, I don't mean to interrupt. Yeah. Start with Friday night. Right? Because the weekend kind of starts like Friday afternoon, right? Yep. Okay, start All right, there. So so Friday night, um, I'd rather be I'd rather be chilling on Friday night. Like I don't want to be drinking too much or eating too much on a Friday night. I'd rather have that on Saturday night. Okay. So Friday night, make a chill. We started watching. We watched this documentary. By the way, the seven five. You ever heard of the seven five? I don't think I'll so. I'll explain it in, in a little bit. But basically, the corruption cops in the eighties in this one area of Brooklyn, New York, and how cops were really um involved with the drug dealing okay kind of had their back the whole thing very interesting and it was about yao ming or something yeah <laughs> as I'm much at. more on brand as as I'm at. Too. um but i would i would rather chill on a friday night we're hanging out we're relaxing we're not doing anything crazy we're just kind of letting the week getting ready for the weekend let's say okay saturday morning wake up go get a good workout in whether a hike hike would be perfect me my girl the dog Go get a good hike in. Come back. Um, what are we doing after that? I think after that, then you're kind of going somewhere to go get a... I want her bagel sandwich that she already described. At Saturday night? No, no, a no. Bagel. I That's want fine. that like like midday. Oh, I want okay. that like noon on a... On a little uh, brunch. little brunch sure. action, something along those lines. And then get me around 4 o'clock. Now let's have a drink. Now let's maybe take some other stuff. Now let's go find a restaurant that we want to go to to go have a nice dinner or something along those lines. I think that all goes. And then Sunday, I kind of go back to what I was doing where it's much more chill. Maybe grab some mass here real quick. Go to an hour. Can't go over an hour in mass. And then uh, start getting ready for Monday. That's pretty good. That, that, that's, something like that. That's, Hit the gym maybe if I can on, on Sunday afternoon. In the middle of the football game. <laughs> <laughs> it's the way to do it, buddy. I, just, I have like this, the, you know, the gears kind of turn. Like, okay, okay. It just went, Arr! just stopped. That you, I would never in a million years, and I get it, you can stare at the TV anywhere, I guess, but I'm like snuggled into my little spot. I need to make sure that I'm in my spot in my house watching those oh, games. There's a machine out there. I guess you were. I guess that's how it goes. The Lakers got hosed on Saturday night. They're going to play without their uh, two guys tonight. Time's running out. That's coming up next. It's Travis Lee, 710 ESPN. All right, Ask Lee is presented by Harris Resort SoCal. Find your funner state of mind with a visit to Harris Resort SoCal. Voted best resort in Funner, California. From dining to unwinding, you'll find fun around every corner. Learn more at HarrisSoCal.com. That's HarrisSoCal.com.
Hey, Laker fans, John Ireland here. Have you downloaded the new ESPN LA app? You gotta get this thing, it's great. You can get Travis and Sliwa, Mason and Ireland, Sedano and Cap, and all of our Lakers talk with Slee right in the palm of your hand. You're just one tap away from everything Lakers. You could even win Lakers tickets. React to the Lakers on ESPN LA app. Download the new ESPN LA app in the App Store or on Google Play. Travis and Sliwa on a Bud White Reaction oh, Monday. Such a so I did the uh, the picks during the break there, Slee. Okay. We're going to go right down to the wire. We're still mm. right next to each other. You With had a Emily? Fi- nope, you're, you can take the weekend <laughs> off. You, okay. you, you could go back and watch more bagels and TV and sticks and spin class and farmer's market. And what did I forget? I forgot something. Um, like five movies. Yeah, yeah I said movies. A bunch I said of movies. movies. Yeah, I said movies. Um, Emily, Donuts. you had nine to bring your grand total to 20. Uh, Taylor, you only had five, but you're still ahead of Emily by a touch. You're, you you yes. have 24. Um, Al, you had 15 this week, and you actually got five of the six things right. You just missed your top dog. I also. Purdy, Purdy only threw four passes. <clears throat> I missed my top one. dog, too. It was Cincinnati. Also, he, he nearly had an interception too. It was like it was the like ball just that went up. Yeah. Just missed it. But we both would have hit on that one. I had fourteen. So you had fifteen, I had fourteen. Mm. You have forty total. I have thirty eight total. Mm. So it's going right down to the uh the wire. You oh, guys I it. guess if Al and I missed on yeah, everything. If you you guys have nothing right and I have yeah. everything right, I win. Uh, unlikely. <laughs> so we gotta come we'll have the By the way, that the can't happen. That nah, definitely can't happen. No, because remember you go around the horn. You just gotta pick Oh yeah, the same, yeah, that's right. right? She's it's got not like you go every time. We'll have the game. We'll have the mm-hmm. over under, and then you got to find four props. Yeah, I would like coin toss yeah, and the, over uh, under length of the national anthem, uh, color of the Gatorade, maybe. That all works for me. Did you see that story? Uh, I, I get. I guess it was a meme for the week. I don't even know if I'm using that word right. There was a bunch of uh, <laughs> kind of. I don't want to say middling, but not all star level <laughs> baseball players that were like, oh, so and so spotted with Margot Robbie this weekend <laughs> in this diner or this mm. place. And Gavin Lux was one of the guys that they threw in like, hey, Gavin Lux spotted at a Hollywood diner with Margot Robbie last night. I'm like, we got our shortstop. <laughs> like I, I didn't even like I don't care if he makes an error every night. If he can hang with Margot Robbie, then that man is batting third and You're playing done. short and we're done. And I went got looking for it. I went looking for it this morning. It's like the Blue Jays' backup first baseman spotted this weekend with Margot Robbie. The Twins, you know, left fielder spotted with Margot Robbie. Just all I'm like, that's kind of a weird meme, but I liked it. A, Mar- little, a little fake news, a little meme. A little bit. But I know. It, it Margot is- Robbie. Really? Yeah. Do you know what movie Down she was movie. just in? Babylon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did you see it? I saw it. And? Three hours long. <laughs> Don't say another word. That's all I needed to hear. <laughs> If, if, it wasn't bad, but it was it was three and hours. And me and him saw it on the same day, same but just day. in different theaters. If you, I say to you, yeah. did you like it? And your first answer is, well, it's three hours long. That means that that's all I need to know. Well, here's the thing. I'm not doing it as a – it was three hours long. That's a long time. 
It's way too long. Hour and a half. I was like, well, let's do a halftime. Yeah. Let's do a halftime. Let's everybody stop. <laughs> let's everybody go take a breather. Let's get some more money in the in a, in the um, parking meter outside. Let's all just rethink everything. Had you said, look, it's great. Yeah. I really enjoyed it, but man, it's long. That's different. It's got your girl in there. I know she's great, but you didn't start. You didn't say it like that. You said, hey, man, it's really long. Because I would have lied if I said anything else. <laughs> Did you like it, Emily? I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I liked it a lot. It was good. It I, was good. I'm not I saying it wasn't good. it was the quickest but... three-hour movie I've ever watched. No if, such thing. That's just... That's she my... watched it at one and a half speed. <laughs> <laughs> like a podcast? <laughs> you just click the button? And don't worry. That wasn't the bad. only movie I watched that day, so it's all good. <laughs> um, the Lakers play close games. They probably should have beat the Celtics. They got screwed by the referees at the end. Mm -hmm. All of these things are true. Patrick Beverly made a terrible decision the lakers collectively made a terrible decision on not to, on letting horford take the three which by the way pretty bad shot by it was so bad it worked to their benefit because it know. hits the side of the backboard maybe that's the play they ran <laughs> the side of the freaking backboard perfect to jalen brown and patrick beverly's gonna foul you hey it worked <laughs> it, it, they <laughs> they ended up winning the game by the way that was weird to see overtime start overtime is starting five minutes left on the clock and the celtics are ahead it's like, How wait, about, what? How does yeah, this work? When they came back to the monitor, too, ESPN came back to the monitor, you didn't, you, you had not seen yet the Pat Bev with the camera showing yeah, the ref. Yeah. So there was just somebody taking a free throw. And I just assumed, I'm like, okay, Braun got attacked, so right? Too. Yeah. Ham got attacked, right? Yeah. Well, somebody got attacked. And it was kind of funny. I wasn't upset at it. Like, there was no, you know, sometimes you can have a critical play and you're looking at your own player and say, what are you yeah. doing? I. I was like, yeah, I, everyone was so upset. I was almost completely not bothered by spotting the Celtics a point in overtime. It was in I'm one thinking, weird way you were trying to justify it. It was that bad. It yeah, was, it was, that, that, bad. It, it, it was yeah. that bad that you could understand a – like I didn't Le, – LeBron's reaction was a lot. And it probably deserved a T, like just by the letter of the law. Yeah. You can't argue calls like that, but they knew they screwed it up. Mm -hmm. I'm not jumping up and down on Patrick Beverly for the camera thing. I think what he did prior to that on the play was far worse because I think that was ultimately what decided the game. But at the same time, it's like we don't have enough wins in the bank to have humorous technical fouls called against us. It was funny seeing him walk over at the camera like, look, let me mm -hmm. show you. It's funny, but you know you're going to get teed up. Every point in – Lakers are not very good in overtime. LeBron's on fumes in overtime most of the time. It's like it's just – it was a bad decision. I get it, but it was a bad move. Did you see the – um? there was a play earlier in the game. Dennis Schroeder got a tech. I don't know if you saw it at all, but Schroeder um, – Tatum's on a fast break – and Schroeder is kind of body to body with him, but does not foul him. He did not foul him. They showed the replay a number of times. Tatum just missed the layup. And Schroeder's reaction when they called the foul, he went to the ground, did not do anything to the referees, went to the ground, just put his hands on his head. Gave him a tech. Yeah. Right? What he did was one one thousandth of what LeBron, of what LeBron did, yeah. and Bron didn't get one, but end of the game. I, I so. For the life of me, and Laker fans, we want to hear from you on this, 877-710-3776. You... Why do we have and and I don't, don't come at me with the well the rule says that you got you know, already use this you can't challenge a no call blah blah if we're gonna have instant replay in sports and in the NBA in particular then why is that not what that is for is instant replay not designed to specific at its most basic level yeah to fix <laughs> egregious game altering mistakes that's what it's there for right I, I don't actually I don't know if it's there for that. I think then that, why do we have it? I think it's – I'm assuming that the reason why you replay something is because something happened that was bang, bang. Something happened that was – That's different. That, and that's a like good use some, of it too. Somebody, somebody going up for a shot and it blocks. Did it hit the backboard first or did it – did the guy block the ball? For sure. That's fine too. But that's more administrative of the game, right, that – did it go off my hand or did it go off yours? Mm -hmm. And it happened so quickly, I, I don't know, mm -hmm. right? That, that's fine. But that's more administration. That You're going to get as many of those right as you're going to get them wrong. They're going to even out over the course of time. The point, going way back to when the NFL brought it in first, back in the, I think it was the late 80s, early 90s, the point was we're missing calls that are changing outcomes of games. Mm -hmm. This is why we want to make sure that we don't have something so bad that we can't review it. And, and we're just going to live with it. That was that. I know the rules. I know that you can't review a non-call. Yeah. All of these things. Mm -hmm. I get it. That's what it's there for. If we're not going to – it's what Van Gundy said in the moment. He's like, 
we have no use for replay in our game if we're not doing this. So this is my only issue with, and I got that. You know, people are calling in the post game show. I told you I could have went post game show till midnight on Saturday because of how heated people were. Right. Um, I had people that were saying, hey, you know what? If you use your challenge, you could still get a challenge. They should just review plays at the end. Trav, here's my only issue with that. My only issue is something that obvious. I I don't know what to tell you. If a replay, if you need a replay for that type of foul, I'm having difficulty with the guys whose occupation. (laughs) Yes. It's just the regular. For sure. the, The reason why I'm setting it up like that, if you need a replay for that type of call, that's what's most frustrating to me You're is right. because that is just a regular common common sets foul with three referees and six eyes all watching what we all saw. And Braun's reaction, there's a reason for it. Um, obviously, everybody upset. The reason why the NBA had to come out and whatever the hell that, that tweet was, it almost in, infuriates me even more. I, yeah, I think replay worse. has a home. I don't know if replay has a home for something as – idiotic of a non-call is that i i get it it, it, but that's in my opinion that's why it's there the replay needs to be there for that replay needs to be there for when the kel roby coleman tackles tommy lee lewis two seconds before the ball gets there if we're not reviewing the things that change the outcome of games why have it at all so so we can re-spot a football by six inches in the second quarter that's stupid that doesn't matter the end of the game there's a game altering pass interference that 99.99999 99.99999 no it's interference lebron james driving to the hoop clearly is yeah, fouled yeah. that's what it's for to have somebody go look we blew it that's a foul he's on the line let's keep it going that's I, it it I, can't be it can't be more complicated than I, that. I think that that makes me think that listen you're not wrong what you're saying but there's some things that are just so obvious that i question is that something that situation because you missed that type of a play in that big of a moment what happens? Does that referee just not good enough to ref in these type of situations? <laughs> All three of them. I'm not kidding. Like it, to me, that it was more about: Are these the right referees to be refereeing a game on ABC at blah blah blah? Because it was so obvious. To even if they said, "Hey, you know, let's just hy- hypothetically, mm-hmm. the NBA had a rule in that situation that they can go back and replay it." Does it make any of those guys look better? They all look like idiots. They look like idiots, but at least the game isn't altered. At least the, mm-hmm. the correct outcome of the game takes place. The, and and that's, that's the point of replays, to make sure that the correct outcome is in there. I, I want to go back to what you were saying there a second ago. That Does it make them not look like idiots? No. If you're a player and you have enough mistakes that are game-altering mistakes, you're out of a job. You 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 don't get to play in this league anymore. I can't use you if you keep blanking up this. Yeah. Why is there not a similar situation? Look, everybody makes mistakes. I get it. Yeah. I'm not saying it's a one and done policy, but there should be some sort of grading procedure where if you do that a few times, I'm sorry, we can't use you here anymore. You got to go 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 do something else. Go rent cars. Go build houses. Go be a teacher. Go 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 do something else because you don't know how to do this. One everybody that all three of those guys missed it at the same time. And if you do that a few times in a season, you got to go find another job. So, so let me tell you, that that was my point. That I think that's my point at the end of the day, that needing a replay to save that yeah, possession. But, but it's like a safety net, right? Like it, mm-hmm. it, it's, I, I get it that they shouldn't be allowed to do it over and over again. But let's just say these guys called a perfect game, but in that moment, mm-hmm. they blew it. They mm-hmm. all blew it. That's what replay's for, to be the safety net, to make sure that the wrong team doesn't win the game because we all went brain dead for half a second. So let's let's put all that to the side. Let's just put it. What you just said about the – there's there should be something. By the way, that wasn't I, – I had tweeted a couple things leading up, not even the final play. Kind of the refereeing, I just kind of kept saying – well, that's an interesting call. Or, geez, what, that, that seems a little odd that they're getting that many more free throws than the Lakers. Mm-hmm. Wow, they're getting that call. That, this was before the final play, and then the final play happened. Um, listen, I'm not telling you that on the spot the referee crew chief comes out and says, uh, all three of you guys will be canned <laughs> after this. But in that situation, maybe you're taking smaller games. Maybe – um, you actually are a- away from the NBA for a couple of weeks because you got to work on this, that, and then you're back up. I agree with you. 
if you and there I needs to be some sort of by the way, every job has that. Of course, there, they there's do. there's not an occupation yeah. out there that if you're not doing a good job at your job that they're saying, well, hey, next week ABC, we got another big one coming. I think you three got it. <laughs> I don't care if it's on ABC on a Saturday night or whether it's on NBA TV on a Wednesday. To me, there's no difference. These guys make a lot of money to officiate yeah. these games. There are a lot of basketball referees that are out there. I get that it's hard. The entire world can't know. It, well, it's that's that's the one now. It's the the second it happened, everybody goes, "Oh yeah, that's bad." That can't happen a bunch. You get you might get one a year where it's like, "Oh my gosh, I can't believe I missed it." But if it's more than that, we got to move on. But to it's the next fine. Guy. Listen, to what they said. They we said we made on one the at the end of last night's game, and that is gut wrenching for us. For who? What you go this to your next play, game? This play will weigh heavily and cause sleepless nights. When I was reading that, I'm like. Can you take that tweet down? I'm going to hallucinate with that tweet up there. It's so stupid. It is so stupid. You know who thinks it wasn't a foul? Taylor. Taylor's like, that's a good defensive play. You're that sleeve. It's the world's smallest violin. <laughs> Taylor's like, that's a good defensive play by Tatum. I, I, I saw all ball. I, I am a Rams fan, and when I saw Nikel Roby Coleman in that NFC Championship mm -hmm. game against the Saints, I wasn't going to throw it back, but that was one of those. I know, I, it's dirty. I, I get it. This is not legitimate. It's a bad taste in your mouth. This is not legitimate. This is not how this is supposed to go. It feels cheap. And that was yeah. to go to the Super Bowl. This was a random game on a Saturday night. We'll get to some of your phone calls coming up here in just a little bit. Um, the Lakers need to start winning some games, and do they need to make some trades to get it done? That's coming up next. It's Travis Lee, 710 ESPN. All right, still uh –
11.30 this morning. Producer Emily's got her Monday edition of Factor Cap. That's coming up this hour on Travis and Sliwa on 710 ESPN. It is also a Bud Light Reaction Monday on 710 ESPN, reacting to everything that went down on the NFL Championship weekend. One dog of a game, Slee, and one pretty darn good one. It's presented by Bud Light. Make Bud Light your game day beer. Bud Light, easy to drink, easy to enjoy. Must be 21 or older. Please enjoy responsibly. Got a question for all you guys. Have you ever rented a car uh, at, at the airport and had, like, the double remote lot? Have you ever experienced that before? Do, like, for instance, here, here's okay. what it is. We, we land in Vegas and mm-hmm. we're renting a car because we're going to four different high schools all over town. And you get on the bus to take you to the rental car facility where they all are, right? Hertz and Enterprise. They're, they're all out there. There's 20 different rental companies there. The rental company that we used isn't even there. You take the van or the, the shuttle bus. Yep to the remote rental facility. Then you get on like an even more JV edition of a different bus to go to a second remote location. Have you ever Save done six that bucks before? a day. Yeah, super cheap. Have you ever done that? Yeah, I have done that. That was the worst rental experience. And the people were fine. But by the time we got our car, we were back in Barstow. Like we were almost all the way back in Southern California. The first bus, the bus from the airport to the rental car place. I don't know. Call it twelve minutes. Not too okay. bad. But you got to queue up. You got to wait. We finally get on the bus. It's, you know, what was the second ride? Another twelve minutes in the same direction. Talking about a half. So hour you're a out, half an hour there, in the Taylor. wrong direction. And and I said to Sue, and, and I'm not. She kept apologizing for. It. I'm like, it's not your fault. I didn't book it. You booked it. I I if I wanted to make sure it was there, I would have done it myself. No no. <laughs> but don't talk to me. It was like for four dollars extra. Mm. Yep. Yeah, she got it. she got the four. It's like, are are you kidding she me? We're gonna four. spend, and then you got to return it, so sure. you have to drive the, back the 12, to Barstow 12. to drop yep. it off. I said, no, no, we're getting an Uber from here. We're not getting on two more vans. So we're, technically, we're going, whatever you saved is yeah. now with Uber. It, Uber has it. It was yep. the best fifteen bucks I've ever spent in my life. Double re- here, people. Let me help you out with this. If you are double remote located, yep. you've made a grave error in where you've rented your by the way from. if we're going to just complain about rental cars let me get in on this um how many times how come it's always to they know and i'm not going to use vegas as the perfect example but there's a lot of airports like this they know that these flights are coming in and they know how many people have booked with this you know whatever this specific uh rental service why do you have one person working why do you have one why is there one counter there's nine counters available, but there's one person there. Yeah, sure. Right? The other person's, I don't know what the other person's doing. The other person's kind of walking around. So we have 14 so people waiting for this one person. And there's <laughs> yeah. two other workers I see because they're all wearing the same they're shirts. They're yeah, on break, they're on break. <laughs> they're on break. The woman who helped us at the counter, we find, finally. It says what time we're coming. Everything you just said is true. So you get off the second bus. You're waiting in this place. There's, there's. I don't know how many people were on the van. Maybe a dozen. Okay. They're all renting cars. It's a lot. Okay. Yeah. There, there were two. It wasn't just one. There mm-hmm. were two people working. Apparently, they're not getting paid on how many people you can get through the line as quickly no, as you no, can. No, 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 no. <laughs> they're just. If I do one an hour, I get the same as if I do ten an hour. So I choose to do one. You know what I respect so much too? I think they're strategic too. Like if you give them a little attitude. No, nope. go slower. That, yeah, that, that's slower. why. That's why I'm hoping that when I'm in line, that the people in front of me are not giving them attitude because then I'm affected. Yeah, you're guilty I'm by affected. association. <laughs> I almost want to say, no, 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 guys, it's fine. We get to the lady who's finally going to, you know, fill out the contract and give you the keys to the car, and all. We're, we're, we're to the very last stage of this. The from the time the plane landed to the time we had butts in the Nissan Rogue, yeah. it was a solid two hours. It was a long time. Do you just take whatever car they give you? It was, we had, the, the car was fine. The car was clean, yeah. new. Was, I want to see the lineup. It, it was a perfect I car. I want to see the, the silver one compared to the red one. Why are they always pushing red? We, we, Why, get, what? we get to the front of the line, and this lady had to have been going for world record of how many cigarettes she could smoke in her life. It was <laughs> like I was with the Marlboro Man. The, you, you, it was choke. It was so bad that you had to... Go sign the little the little p- keypad. Yeah, yeah. That's all electronic now, mm-hmm. right? You don't sign actual. Pa- so you'd sign it and you take two steps back. Like I can't be this close to you. I'm going to get wow. lung cancer just having a conversation with this person. It was terrible. Vegas and it was two hours away. Vegas. Walk Pretty- around the casinos. Let me take a breath of fresh air in here. 
Open the door. Yeah, welcome. Welcome, welcome to it was, Las Vegas. Had a nice time. Had a really good dinner on Friday night. It was all good. Let's go to Luke. Luke, you're up first. It's Travis Lee. What's going on? Hey, how come nobody talks about Darvin Ham at the end of those games? Uh, Memphis win was cool and all, but let's not act like he's not fouling up three to send him to the free throw line where you can only get two points or not calling timeout, put the ball in LeBron's hand. I mean, what are we doing here? So, so Luke, uh, actually, we were just talking about this earlier. Imagine if Al Horford hits that three. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't stop talking about the Luka portion of this when they're playing the Dallas Mavericks, they're up three, and they don't send a double team. Um, and that's just one of the games. Listen, the Lakers have had – if we want to bitch and complain about the Los Angeles Lakers and some refereeing, that's fine. We can do that. But, Trev, they also have a handful of games that were in their own hands. Yes. And they've had opportunities. That's yes. why these hurt so much, the one against the Celtics, because you're trying to make up ground from all the other losses that you had this season. But I, I, if I list it out, they were up early on in the season against Portland. They're up seven. Two minutes left to go, they lose that game. They're up 17 against the Indiana Pacers in the fourth quarter. They lose that game. The Philly game on the road, Anthony Davis has the ball at the free throw line. Hit one free throw. That's it. Game's over. They don't have any timeouts left. they got to go three seconds to go. He misses it. Game goes to OT. We know what happens. Yep. Dallas game, two Boston games. AD yep. missed two free throws this last one that they have. Ultimately, when you're four games below 500 and 13th place in the Western Conference, it's not all because of the referees. Right. You've obviously dug yourself a hole as well. How much of what he, the, the caller was talking about, though, do you put on Darvin's ticket? Because I think there's a decent amount that goes his way. And, and I get it. He's a rel- He's an inexperienced head coach he's been a coach in the league for a long time but this is his first head coaching run I like him a lot I I like him as a guy I think he's got a great presence I think he brings a certain amount of calm and gravitas to these things he does but when you're constantly tricking off end of game situations it's not a coincidence they're they're, to the point you've made a couple of times not or defending the three-point shot as opposed to giving up twos I don't understand. There's it. no defense. There for is it. no defense no. for it. There, there are. There seems to be a lot of chaos at end of games. There seems to be a lot of really bad possessions at end of games. We can give some of that to the players for mm-hmm. sure, but some of that comes to the coaches because at some point you got to put guys out there that are executing game in situations correctly. If you get a good look and the guy just misses, that, that's not a coaching. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. if you're not getting a shot, if you're fouling when guys are going to the basket, if you're defending the wrong part of the court. You, these are coaching things that I think, and, and hopefully he'll get better as he goes through, but because people like him, and I count myself among the people that like him, I think that caller's right. There's a lot of bad end-of-game situation, and at least some of that has to go to the coach. So, by the way, I'll go back to this. When you're four games below 500, it's impossible that um, a lot of people don't have a little bit to do with it. What I yeah. can't tell you is... I can't tell you AD missing two free throws against the Celtics. That's not on him. However, I can tell you, we go back to that Dallas game, that I felt like that's on coach. They did it wrong. They got away with it, but they did it wrong. The game on Saturday, but I'll, I'll use that as an example. Let's say they're playing the percentages. What he can't have control over is Patrick Beverly fouling Jalen Brown. No, but how many times are we going to let the same guy make a bad decision before we say well, you're not playing anymore? That that yeah, but, he, but that Pat, he does have Pat control. Pat Bev, if, if we just use Pat Bev as an example, hits a big three, gets a big two. I, I hear in, you. I'm not saying that he's the guy. What I'm saying is, if if it's very clear, if you are not executing properly at the end of games, we're not going to play. I'm with you. What you're saying for Beverly specifically, I'm Rust saying didn't Jenner, play in the fourth, and then played in the entire overtime. More part or less. of the OT, yeah, yeah it would, the which OT. is an odd way. If look, if he's going to close in overtime, why is he not trying to close it in regulation? There are things to be critical of him about. It's not a disaster, which I don't disagree. But I think being critical about the, Darvin Ham when is all right. the end of game goes badly frequently. That's not always the players. Mm-hmm. It's not exclusively the players. He has to take ownership in those things. Well, Lakers have been very creative in how to lose at the end of games. Well, and and no LeBron tonight, mm-hmm. no Anthony Davis tonight. They're playing the Nets. Um, and I, there's just not enough runway left, Slee. And and I get I get the position that they're in. Like you said, they're twenty seven or twenty three and twenty seven. They're two games out of the play in spot. They're only there's eleven to they're nine. They're two and a half games out of not being in the play on spot, being in the sixth spot. 
But we've been talking about this way too yeah, long. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of done we're, with we're, all we're, that. that it, here, here's the thing. Emily and I were talking about this earlier. If they were in 12th place one week, and the next week they're in 6th, and then the next week they're in 10th, and the next week they're no, in 7th. No, they seventh, own 12 and 13. They, they've been in 12th and 13th place the whole year. Yeah. They really haven't moved out of that spot. If it were going to happen, I get it. AD missed a lot of time. But here we are again, and this is the rub with Anthony Davis. He's a great player, but we already have to give him another night off because of injury concerns. And I, I get it. you got to give LeBron a night off because he's in year 20. I get it. You're four games under 500. You're in 13th place. There just isn't a ton of runway to just kind of say, okay, here, we're just going to we're gonna put this game in. What, what do you give them a chance to win tonight? One out of five? One out of eight? Something like that? No KD, potentially no Ben Simmons, but yeah, one out of five. One out of five. One so out of you're five. saying I'm going to take an 80% chance that we're going to lose this mm-hmm. game? You, you don't, you're you not the Golden State Warriors who like, look, the second we decide we're going to commit to this, we're going to be fine. You don't have that luxury. The, the only thing that I could think of, they got New York tomorrow as well, so they have back-to-back. I get it. So it could just be one of those two games. I get it. And I'm with you on the standings thing. I'm kind of done with the whole, hey, they're only two back of here. They're only two and a half. We've been, I've been saying that for 30 days, right? Like that, that's, there, there comes a time where you say, hey, Lakers are in seventh right now. However, if they lose – then they're going to fall back to 10th. They're locked in. They've been staying underneath that line, at least underneath that uh, the playing tournament All line. right, so with all this in mind, does this make it more or less likely that they move some of those assets that they have to try to push them out of that 13th spot into more of the, the middle of the pack? That's coming up in just a little bit. But coming up next, it's Factor Cap. It's Travis Lee, 17. 17-
10 a.m. to 1 p.m., and it's time for Factor Cap. Oh, that's Cap. That's so Cap, Dad. <laughs> Everything I've said is a Cap, but I'm going to go Fact. First of all, it's not a Cap. It's no, just it is a cap. cap. Welcome to Factor Cap. Hey, guys. Pop quiz. What were the three movies that I watched this weekend? <laughs> Social Network. Social so- oh, Network's yeah. one of them. By the way, that's a great movie. Yes. I love that movie. Best too. movie of the 2010s. And um, then... The other oh, two. Oh, Infinity something. Infinity Pool. Infinity Pool. Oh, one of those A24 ones. Right? Yes, The Floor Project yeah. was the other one. That was an A24 movie. Taylor. Yes, you nice got shot, it. Bro. A24? Yeah, that's a production company. They do uh, a lot of different cool indie movies. A lot of stuff. Yeah, pay attention. <laughs> you got you to gotta really know about now, that Now, if movie. you ask me all the things you ate, I could run, I could run those off the top of my head. That yes, I remember later. vividly. Right. That's much more important to pasta. me. Pasta. <laughs> right? Because you had pasta. She had the fried pasta mac and cheese balls. from Culver she City. Oh, got tiramisu. I didn't mention that. I didn't mention that. You mentioned got the that. Bagel, you went, the bagel sandwich. The bagel sandwich. sandwich. With everything. You went everything. to Farmer's Market. You had yep. a baguette. You had a croissant. Yep. You had... She got hose at the Farmer's Market. Yeah. A lot of... It's a little expensive out there. Silver Lake area. Some of it sticks. Some of it just bounces right off. It's all good. I'm going to eat it. It's fine. All right. So, speaking of movies... So the show I watched yesterday, it's called The Last of Us. I talked about it on Thursday in my What to Watch over the weekend. So hopefully if you guys, I don't think you guys watched it, but if people are listening, watched it. But uh, it's a very emotional episode. So I cried. So you cry in movies. Travis, Fedra Cap. Fact, but it's very, very rare. Mm-hmm. It, 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 it almost always involves the same thing. It almost always involves fathers and sons and somebody dying. That, that 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 that's that's the only thing that, that sounds really, like the proper ticket yeah to yeah yeah i, I don't want to say never emotions. but that that's the that combination the other yeah. one that gets me too and espn is the number one offender of this anytime you have a father or mother returning from overseas yeah. and they oh, surprise yeah. the family 100 percent of the time that gets me mm-hmm. but it's rare but i do yes all right give yeah. me what is your definition of crying I want to know your definition. Well, well you know, not not sobbing. Yeah, but because yeah, if you're like hyperventilating, no, like, no, 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 you know, sitting that. in because I can't do that. No, that, no, but just yeah, a uh, little bit of that, a little bit of that. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm run to the bathroom real quick. Yeah. That was you and hour three of Babylon, right? <laughs> <laughs> Out of boredom, <laughs> knowing that. <laughs> Out of complete and utter boredom. <laughs> Knowing there was an hour left. Listen, I'm not kidding. I turned to her. <laughs> I turned to her and I told her, I'm like, you know, there's still an hour and 20 minutes left. Like, I was frustrated. I didn't know what to do. And she's like, I know. So what do you want to do? And then we were both just so lazy. We just sat there and just were, were let you, another 40 go by. Were you at one of the theaters where you can order drinks? Yeah. You should have just gone hard. Just say, hey, bring me an entire bottle of Makers and leave. And leave and I'll then I would have started dollars. crying. Yeah. Um, yeah, every once in a while, you know, you tear up. And, and Is yeah. there one particular lane that gets you every time? Um, it doesn't have to be like a movie like that. I- I'll give you an example. There was, there's some, look, YouTube puts out really, really good content. And there's a dude telling his story about how his life has turned around recently and uh, some of the different personal things that he had to go through. His family, his parents used to beat him when he was younger. He just got like a whole story of where he is today. And it's actually very motivational. Let's put it that way. But this guy's telling his story about growing up sure. and what he had to go through. And as a kid, and this moment changed his life. What do you want me to do? You know, like, I'm not going, you can't just be like, oh, that's cool, and then just move on. It's more when people are telling like an actual personal story of how they're turning their life around, something like that. All right, Taylor? Fact, yes, I do. I think the last movie that made me cry was Nomadland, actually. Ooh, yeah, that's yeah. a good one. It gets it, kind of sad. It had uh, Fr- Frances McDormand in it. She goes in it as a van life movie. Do you know? Um, no, I've not seen it. It won the Oscar in twenty twenty. Took me back to my days of living in a van. Yeah, yeah, that would do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mother daughter uh, relationships always do it for me. And like when old people pass away, it's like when like it's an older couple and all that stuff. That kind of gets me too. All right, so um, <laughs> we haven't talked about the Eagles 49ers game that much yet. I know we're going to get to it soon, but... Um, are we? I don't know. Yeah, we should. Hard um, to talk about a game where one team wasn't allowed to <laughs> yeah, use quarterbacks. Hey. I mean, it's just like... <laughs> Eagles are in the Super Bowl. <laughs> How about this? Hey, Brock Purdy, can you play? No. Well, go in okay. anyway. Awesome. Uh, the but... only I took away is he didn't throw a pick. <laughs> this is the... Uh, I, need, I needed those points. <laughs> this is the third uh, championship go-around for the city of Philadelphia in the last uh, last year. Yeah. We know Philly goes crazy when they get to at least sniffing. If they win a 
playoff game to go crazy. So there is something that would get you to climb a pole in celebration. Alan, Dr. Cap. Um, there isn't much, uh, but I will just, if this situation ever happens and you said, hey, if it happens, Mandy? you have to. Definitely not. Uh, you have to. <laughs> <laughs> you have to go up a happen. pole. You have yeah. to go up a pole. Um, San In Diego. San Diego has never won a championship, and I want to repeat that when I say it. Okay, think about how many championships USC, UCLA, the Lakers, the Dodgers, the Kings. Of this, go down the list. It's like the it's Angels, honestly the Ducks. They've all won championships. And by the way, let's keep Anaheim even out of the mix. Let's just Anaheim say Anaheim has two. Anaheim has two. <laughs> Anaheim has two. San Diego has never yeah. won anything. If you told me that the Padres won a World Series and I got to go up a pole, I'll go up a pole for that. All right, Trev? No. I, the, the only way I'm going to the top of the pole is if there's a winning lottery ticket up there. <laughs> I'd, like, I'd love to see the Dodgers win the World Series. The Rams just did win the Super Bowl a year ago, and I loved every minute of it. Yeah. Uh, my, my pole climbing days were never here, yeah. but they're certainly well in the rearview mirror. How high right do now. we have to go up? Because if I'm going up over – Four feet, then I need somebody to help me take take me down. It's traffic close. light height. It's I'm screaming it. for your foot can literally touch the ground. There's a lottery ticket up there that says, Trav, you can get up there. That's a $8 million jackpot. I'm finding my way up there. But <laughs> short of that, no way. By the way, the Anaheim has two. Really ripped my heart when you said Dude. that. They do have two. World Series like, and no Stanley problem. Cup. Yeah, it's just... Yeah, no problem. Uh, Taylor? <laughs> Cap, uh, <laughs> even the Kings winning the championship wouldn't have me climbing poles. So oh, I you'd think... be up in a pole. I, I, I don't believe you. I would right only now. climb a pole if I'm escaping an angry mob or something like that. Not a bad reason. Yeah, that's I'd true. let the mob get me. I'd, I'd stop. <laughs> I'd just hurry up, get this over with. Yeah. All right, so uh, at, at Infinity Pool, when I saw it this weekend, uh, a guy next to me, we, we were talking about, you know, etiquette in the theater, talking in the theater with Clinton uh, on Friday. And um, so at the end of the movie... The guy, the group of guys next to me is three guys, clapped at the end of the movie. So clapping at the end of the movie. Which, I'm sorry, which movie am? Infinity Pool. Okay. And also, I mean, I want to. Is, is the, is I the, like how you need a clarification. Well, I'm just of, so. He, it was but down here's to the like thing: six movies. <laughs> well, she, she watched she a lot of movies one. this weekend. <laughs> is the ending inspirational? No. Is it surprising? It just ended. No. Okay. It's just it just ended. It's not like it's That's Top awesome. Gun Maverick. Because sometimes it's no, like, I know what oh you my mean. gosh. Like you were waiting for something yeah, for her like, to say it was very She motivation. wasn't really dead. It was inspirational. I did not say amazing. So, yeah. Uh, But yeah, clapping at the end of the movie is weirder than clapping at the when the plane lands. Taylor, Factor Cap. Oh, I, I, I didn't really experience the clapping during a movie phenomenon until I moved to California. It's, it's just super weird to me. But I don't mind it so much because it's not during the movie. You're not, you're not bothering anybody, so just yeah. clap away. Yeah. Trev? So we're coming in last night, and the plane, we flew into John Wayne, and perfectly pleasant flight. Like, you, you know, coming out of Vegas, sometimes it's super bumpy, and the plane's bouncing all over the sky. It really wasn't. Nice mm-hmm. and smooth, and we're coming in. And, but as we're coming through the clouds in Orange County, it's bouncing around a little bit. Nothing crazy. And I'm... I'm I'm a little bit of a nervous flyer. Nothing nothing bad, but I, when the plane starts bucking, I'm like, yeah. I, I don't love this. Now we're over the 405. We're just about to have the wheels hit the uh, the, the runway, and the plane like lurches hard to the left and then lurches hard to the right to kind of recorrect and hits the runway hard, mm. bounces back up in the air, bounces back down again, mm. right? It goes ba-boom, ba-boom, like twice it, it bounced. Applause was necessary in this particular moment because we we're all alive. It was fine. We, we got to the gate safely. Everything was good, but I didn't have anything to do with that movie. At least I'm alive at the end of a flight, so give me the uh, cheering on the airplane. A hundred percent fact. It's much weirder in a movie clap. Yes. I, I By the way, I get it. There's some really great movies out there. You know what? If you feel like, wow, this was inspirational, it was motivational, the plot was great, amazing. I didn't see that happening. That is not Infinity Pool. <laughs> well, and if you wanted to get up and clap... That's your prerogative. I'm not going to do it. But I do know when I'm on a plane, <laughs> okay? And I don't know how you feel, but there are times, and I'm, okay, I'm, I'm fine. You know, I've, I've traveled, and there's been flights that are 12 hours, 18 hours. I do it. But you're going to tell me at no point during that flight you're not saying to yourself, I see nothing but water. Yeah. This could be it right here. Sure. It's much more necessary to clap when that plane lands properly than it is Your on Die Hard 2. Your life is on, in the hands of that person flying the airplane. <laughs> yeah. When the movie ends, I don't, I'm just trying to go get a sandwich. Wait, Alan, so <laughs> have matter. you clapped? Uh, I have not clapped. I have okay. not had a reason to, but. Right. 
So, um, but if I need to, if they say, "Hey, you're going," you're, if that gets us down safely, right? There's, I think the only exception for the movie thing is like if you're at a screening and like the people who worked in the movie are there. Like that's a little different than like having it just be in a random theater. I have one last one for you guys. So last night, the Empire State Building uh, lit up green uh, at one point and then they red at the another beam. point. Sort yeah. of similar. So it one for the Chiefs, one for the Eagles. So I was <laughs> watching the games with my friends who are big New York Giants fans and they were going off. They're like, how could the Empire State Building do this? Because they're divisional rivals to yeah. the Giants that are yep. in New York City. So this is a bad look from New York. Uh, Travis, Factor Cap? You know, I fact, it, it, I don't, you know this by me now. I don't get super tied up in the rivalry thing i want to beat those guys and there are teams that i dislike more than others but this oh i can never do this or i can never do that doesn't really hit me like that until i started thinking about it in this very specific example if they lit up la city hall in orange and black after the giants went to the world series i would hate that (laughs) They're like, what are you doing? This is an iconic L.A. landmark lit up in the colors of the team that you compete against more than anyone else. If they would have lit up L.A. City Hall in green and white after the Celtics won that game, it's ridiculous. I get it that maybe there's a charitable component. to. I I don't know. But in New York City, you don't put the Eagles colors on the Empire State Building. It's silly. So this is fact for me, too. Do you not – was it a week ago that the Eagles won 38-7 – to yeah, against the exactly. Giants, uh, that makes no sense to me. That makes no sense. I, I do think that, you know, and, and New York is a really, really good sports town. New yes. York is an unbelievably passionate sports town that has basically two of everything. Why are you lighting up the colors of the Philadelphia Eagles? By the way, it doesn't have to be the Eagles. It just happens to be the team that kicked your ass a week ago. Yeah, did they light it yellow and red for the Chiefs at yes, some point? Yes, they, they, they lit it for the Chiefs. They lit it for the Eagles. They would have done it either way for whatever team won that game. Now, but it, it does look no bad. Sense. But you. it makes no sense. Like, why New York? And Taylor? Uh, Cap, I don't think this was a, a New Yorker. I think this is an inside job. I think a Philly fan must have climbed that. Like, <laughs> He's in charge of the lights. And, yeah, lit it up. Mm, I like inside that. job. Inside Definitely. job. The guy moved to New that. York from Philly six months ago <laughs> just, just to do this. Called the long con, right? He's probably been working there for 30 years, just waiting for this moment, mm-hmm. lit it up along the way. Lakers have one tonight. They're not going to do Anthony Davis. They're not going to have LeBron James. Is it time to bring in more reinforcements? That's coming up next. It's Travis Lee, 17. 17-
Travis and Siwa of Bud Light Reaction Monday, reacting to everything that went down on championship weekend. Eagles, Chiefs, set for Super Bowl 57, and the Lakers. That East Coast swing, the Grammy trip. Right now, more of Travis and Siwa on a Bud Light Reaction Monday. Number 22, guys. Number 22. San Diego State, number 22 in the latest NCAA Wait, basketball Wait, where's Virginia? Rankings. At six. They are 38. San Diego State. They're six. Virginia's Virginia ball. six? I, I don't, to be honest with you, I watch probably – I can't watch college games right now. In the Mountain West, they don't air them. I don't think – I think they're aired through streaming, through like an <laughs> underground website, through like a you black market. You got to get one market. of those bootleg streaming services. You got to get the whole thing. Services. Yeah, they're not airing San Jose State and San Diego State. Here right it now. is. I, I knew – I was looking for it. I just found it. The Gauchos are unranked. Okay. However – they're seventeen and three. Okay. Oh wow. All okay. right. I, I just I don't know what that means, but they're seventeen and three. Why are we, why are we not in the top twenty five? I couldn't tell you anybody in. The, well, now I could. San Diego State and Virginia are both in the top twenty five. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I feel like we're getting disrespected. What's their Ken Palm? Uh, I don't know. I I, I do. Many, I know Q4? what that is. How, what's that? How many uh, Q one wins? Uh, probably zero. Yeah, probably oh, yeah. not a, yeah. a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, probably it's okay. Stay none. in the mix. Get close to the tournament. Throw them in the tourney. You know, it's gonna, 180 get, teams get in the they'll tournament. Get beat by Northridge in the first round of the Big don't, West don't, tournament or something. Don't start that. That's okay, San Diego. Brian Dutcher, San Diego State, is the king since Steve Fisher left of losing in the first round. <laughs> the no, king. No, you're, but here's the thing: Are you talking about the Mountain West or the the real tournament? I'm talking about the real tournament. Oh no, we, no I'm talking Big West tournament. Oh, your tournament. Uh, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They'll win 25 games. They'll be yep. 25 and five or whatever, mm-hmm. right? And, and then, then first, first <laughs> number one seed in the Big West tournament playing, I don't know, you know, uh, Hawaii, and they'll lose by seven. It just seems like that. I think it's only happened uh, one time, but it feels like it Dutcher happens. last uh, March Madness tournament started playing prevent offense with nine minutes left to go with a six point lead. He's like, that's it. We're done with offense. Uh, I can't, I'm sorry. <laughs> We're done. I, I understand your frustration, and I'm not dismissing it. You're in the tournament. I can't really get that mad at you. I Can't my team game. doesn't get and when we get in we're the fifteenth seed and you get stomped by North Carolina. But we have Arizona. real athletes. I know you guys. You guys players. should win games. You should be in there. Uh, so Taylor and I went and got a glass of water during the break, and he's like, "I got a story from this weekend, which uh, I don't think you've ever phrased it to me quite like that, but I'm very glad you did because I had a perfect weekend too, guys. <laughs> <laughs> what, did. what what did your perfect okay, weekend? Wait, 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 my question. And right play out your the own gate. music. Yeah, my question right out the gate. Is it where does this story <laughs> that's a good start where does this story rank to the raccoon story are we walking away saying that's that's a high bar Slee. it's a very high bar okay yeah. i just i i want to know what i'm walking into i don't know if i'll ever yeah, top the raccoon like story saying, are you comparing every movie you ever walk into to the godfather the guy came in with the raccoon story i said <laughs> it's the best story that i've ever got I, I for all i know this but, guy is becoming a storyteller overnight can i just tell you something you just did a really bad guy move i Put up too much. You yeah. you and so I hyped it up. The last much. story you told me was great. Is this one is good? Well, now of course it's not gonna be. And now you just shot a hole in the side of the guy's boat. If it doesn't go as planned, you got another story later in the week. Let's hear. My <laughs> goodness, Al, <laughs> such a bad. The guy only thing move. that could top the raccoon is like a cocaine bear coming into my room. Yes. Oh yeah. Um, I saw the trailer for that uh, this weekend. Doesn't look bad. It's gonna it be looks so kind of funny. It's gonna be no. It's gonna be called classic funny. Travis. It's gonna be so funny in a weird way. Travis, I don't think I'm gonna watch it, but it looks kind of funny. <laughs> okay, so my weekend Friday, I stuck around downtown, which is something that I usually don't do. But I had a date, uh, so took the date to Silver Lake Ramen. How did you meet her? A friend of a friend. Okay. So she was at my show on Wednesday, actually, oh, and she um, musicians. Yeah. yeah, red flag right there. <laughs> <laughs> but we went to Silver Lake Ramen. After that, uh, she lives downtown, so she just wanted to walk around, and we walked to the last bookstore. And she was just perusing, looking through books and stuff. I've got enough books right now. I'm not trying to buy one. But uh, <laughs> she said she was looking for something, you know, for a coffee table or something. And she chose a book about childbirth in the 16th century. As one does. Yeah. So she's she's kind of I'm surprised that one was available. Yeah, she's, well, I, I sit down for coffee. I'm like, hmm, how does childbirth? Wonder work? how they used to do C sections back in the 1600s. Ooh. If only I had some reading material. Hey, what is this? But you know, I I really wasn't bothered by it or thought anything of it until I told my friend the next day, and they they said, oh, that's kind of a red flag, isn't it? And I thought, no, I kind of want to see her again. <laughs> a well, crazy. all right. Well, it, it, here's real quick here. If you don't think it's a red flag and you want to see her again, see her again. It's all good. It's gonna happen. It's I good. mean, yeah. I, I, just go see her again. Um, I'm going to need to know what she buys on the second date. 
<laughs> like if it's another book about how, how close dismembering attention. people, then I'm not gonna. How close I, attention would you would you pay to what she got? Okay, you 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 won't. I would pay unbelievable attention to what she bought at a bookstore. It would mean because. It ma- what she's reading is a pretty good insight into her personality. What she's into is a really good part of her personality. Yeah, I would pay very, very close attention. So you w- to what would she's you bought. not go out on a second no, date no, based no, no. on no it, that? No, it, it's it's a very odd choice. Don't it get me wrong. The picture. But it does. It it pills, fills in the picture. But if they had a nice time and he mm-hmm. liked her, absolutely, I'd go out with her again. And it's not like it's a current, you know. How to rear a child? I thought she's trying to have well, one. Okay, correct me if I'm wrong here. That would be a, that'd be the, the red flag for me. Being a great dad, <laughs> it wasn't child rearing. It was child delivery, right? Correct. So Is she a nurse? There's, there's pictures of like C sections and stuff inside of it. I flipped through it. It was you know. Is she a nurse? Not my t- no. She's not. A nurse. Is she a doctor? No. Is she interested in being a nurse or a doctor? I think she's just interested in morbid things. Okay. Well, are you? Yeah. Okay. Then to a degree. Okay. Yeah. Not not that particular vein of morbid things, but you know. Had you been to Silver Lake Ramen before? First time, actually. And that's what What'd you, you get out of the story. Is What'd you the think? Lake ramen? <laughs> it was cr- I love my ramen. Really good. I yeah. Yeah, that's a good spot. <laughs> but, it's a but, good spot. Slee, that's. But, we uh, <laughs> Emily, we already discussed it. Okay, we already discussed it. We got past. No, she's it. right. I was She's ready right. for Silver Lake Ramen. I, I love was, that about you, Slee. I love I that you ready, focus on the... I was ready to come with Silver mundane. Lake Ramen right out the gate. I was just trying to be respectful. You're like, oh, great story. The, Silver the, Lake Ramen. The, Silver Lake the, Ramen. The book about medieval surgeries is uninteresting to you, but the the, the where they went to well, have you guys food... Want her, well, you guys want him not to go out on a second no, date with it. I saying. disagree. I said, it's, I think he that's should. That's not what I said. I said the exact opposite of that, in fact. It's red flags. It's not a stop sign. It's just the thing that you're trying to... Yeah, but how many red flags in a row before it's, it's like, like a, exactly. turn it's the book around flag. and go the other way? <laughs> Yeah, it's just gonna be, you know, it, it's got it's the pros and the cons, and I'm sure she had many, many pros. And but you had a good too. time. Very where much where so. are you going? Are you going back to another bookstore? Uh, another I think we're gonna place? think we're gonna hang out in the South Bay this time. My my neck of the woods. Okay. Not I haven't decided on what we're doing, but that's that's got to be a, a whole. You haven't been in the the market for a while either. That that whole first date, second date, because you want some things that are fun. That, that there's a little bit of an activity involved, but at the same time you want. To spend time with the person to get to know them a little bit better, right? They're, it's that trying to fine line it. You know what I'd always pay attention to? I'd always pay attention to you go to a restaurant and how she, like her demeanor, how she treats other people. Of course. There's one girl I went out. This years ago, right? Went out. She was like so rude to the server. Oh, like, a, where's my water? Where's this? I'm like, well, what the hell? 100%. Yeah, no, I, honestly, it was like. 100%. But I was like looking across. I'm like, did I just miss something? Why are you, why are you asking that? You and then there's other people that are like. The nicest and yeah. the sweetest. I'm like, all right. The, you wouldn't do this. I wouldn't do this. But that's one of those things. Like, if you go out on the first date and the your the other person in the date is rude to the waiter, at that point, aren't you just like, you know what? I don't think this is going to work out. Mm-hmm. Enjoy the rest of your night. I'm leaving because unless the other person's super hot and you're just trying to, I'm going to give this one shot and see what Margo happens. Margot Robbie. They, look, they, look, Margot Robbie could fight the waiter, and I'm not leaving. But. <laughs> That's one of those things. There's certain times where you let things marinate and you say, you know what? You should be quicker with your water. (laughs) But there is one of those. That that is a super red flag. Yeah. Super red flag. And and just be nice, people. Just be, you don't even have to be nice. Just don't be rude. Yeah. Just not even polite, right? Just be neutral. (laughs) Neutral's fine. You don't have to get everything exactly right. Which one of the uh, ramen bowls you get? Did you get a uh, spicy uh, got, one? No, no, not, 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 too, not too spicy. I got pork. Yeah. Oh, you got pork. Pork. That's good. That's good one. Iowa boy. Any uh, a, any apps before? Edamame. Oh, you got edamame. Yeah. Spicy or regular? Spicy. Yeah, good. That's pretty good. <laughs> Place is good. Any Place more really questions, Al? <laughs> nah, I might come back to you on the Robert stuff. You guys said inside, outside. There's a lot of questions. Good ice cream place next to it, too. Good. <laughs> you You talking about the one downtown or in Silver Lake? Uh, Silver Lake. Oh, we went downtown. There's oh, several locations. They had one. Yeah. I know they got one in SD, too. They just opened one up yeah, probably a, a little bit ago in San Diego. It's a chain. You should know this. It kind thing. of defeats the purpose of the name Silver Lake Ramen if you're going to put it in San Diego and you're going to put it in the downtown, but that's just my take on this. When SD Ramen. <laughs> exactly. Downtown LA Ramen. I mean, they just, have Texas Roadhouse in California. Just build the sign with a big under, un, line. That just ended ramen. everything. Yeah. It's just ended everything. It's over. All right. We're going to talk about the Lakers. And what do we got? Today is the 30th. We've got 10 days before the NBA trade deadline. Yeah. Lakers still have Ten those days. two picks. They mm-hmm. haven't moved them. Is that going to change? It's next. It's Travis Lee. So-
Hey, Laker fans, John Ireland here. Have you downloaded the new ESPN LA app? You gotta get this thing, it's great. You can get Travis and Sliwa, Mason and Ireland, Sedano and Cap, and all of our Lakers talk with Slee right in the palm of your hand. You're just one tap away from everything Lakers. You could even win Lakers tickets. React to the Lakers on ESPN LA app. Download the new ESPN LA app in the App Store or on Google Play. Good Karma Brands Radio Station. Here we go, Travis Rogers, Alan Sliwa. Travis and Sliwa is off your Monday. We're here each weekday, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. We begin nine hours of L.A. sports talk all day long. Hope you had a great weekend. Here we go, Monday rolling a Bud Light Reaction Monday. As we recap championship weekend, two teams left. On the road to Super Bowl 57 in Arizona, Eagles, Chiefs. We're going to react to everything that went down yesterday, plus Saturday night in Boston. Who knew the refs were wearing Celtics jerseys? We get ready for night one of a back-to-back Brooklyn, and then the Knicks. Sliwa's so ready to get you pumped for that. Let's get to it on a Bud Light Reaction Monday. Travis and Sliwa, right now. Yeah. So, Al, we were talking a little bit during the break. I asked you if you'd played any pickleball yet, and you said you haven't gotten to it yet. Six tournaments I've been in so far. <laughs> Six weekends straight. You may need to have a backup plan. Not okay. for your, but for your partner. Okay. I went and played Thursday again, right? I'm trying to play once a week leading up to our tournament. I play with my buddy Brad, and he's much better at it than I am. We played four games, and he went three and one. There's a couple of things going on here. Okay. I won the first one, mm-hmm. and kind of, that, that, I didn't kill him, but I won decisively. I think I won like 11 to six or something Where like that. Where you run in your mouth like, this is boring. Nope. Okay. Nope, because I know what the next game was close, but I lost. And then the third game, he kicked my ass. And then the fourth game, he really kicked my ass. Did you ass. break your paddle? Nope. Okay. Al, I can't get through more than one game before I can barely move. Mm. I, I'm, I'm trying to increase my endurance as we get closer to this thing. Here's the problem. I played, we played for, I don't know, an hour and 20 minutes or so. Okay. So a decent amount of time, but nothing crazy. It's not like we did a three-hour session that's a that's a decent decent amount of time it is it's decent but it's again it's not like a hundred it's not an hour and 20 minutes of non-stop you play you chat a little bit you sit down you drink your water you go back out you play a little bit more so it's fine Mm -hmm. third uh friday flying to vegas with the i'm a little sore but nothing crazy right saturday and sunday i'm sore as heck better today I can't lift my arm over my head. Mm. My back hurts me. My knees, I can't bend my right knee, basically. I'm basically walking around like a pirate on a peg leg. I can't bend my knee at all because it's so arthritic and jacked up or whatever it is. There's virtually, I, you tell me what you want me to do. Continue to practice to try to improve my yeah. ability or basically not touch a pickleball paddle oh, no, this until is easy. the tournament. This is easy. First off, I mean, you can't do both. Was there any moment like just during the weekend where you're telling Susan, 
man, really sore, this, that? Or do you not tell her anything because she's going to say, well, why don't you just stretch and you don't want to do that because you've been doing that now for 20 plus years? I complain a lot about okay. everything. Mm-hmm. And this is just kind of the way that our relationships were. I brought the little... um the little tube of CBD, like a cream salve kind mm-hmm. of thing, because that tends to be a pretty good pain reliever to me. I was walking and around like I was 150 years old. I had it on my knees. I had it on my back. I had it on my shoulder. I had it on my elbow. Um, there's no chance I get to the middle of March with this thing. All right, this is what you do. Keep playing the way you are. And then the last week leading up to the actual pickleball Saturday tournament, whatever, um, just don't play that week. So stop on Sunday. Not a bad idea. Now you got four or five days where you do nothing. Your body recovers. And then sa- by that time, you have- But I don't have, think I'm going to get to the tournament at this point. You've pace. improved your skill set. You're much better at it. I stink. You know, you're, I, I'm, no. I'm sure, compared to some of these ringers, yeah. I, we're, but who are you to comparing people. to? At this radio station? No, 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 no. Not to the radio. That, I'm, I don't worry about these guys. I got those guys covered. It's, but that's but, kind of the but, point. That's all it is. But I don't want to embarrass myself. I don't want to be the first person out. I don't want to get hurt yeah. in, in the opposite order. Don't want to get hurt first. But do you agree that if you give yourself one week off before the tournament? I don't think, no. That's, that's not going to give the body it, enough it, time to... Sure. Like, for instance, I could probably play today if I had to. But each time I play, I get progressively more jacked up than the time before. We still got another month and change before this thing comes around. When you first played, what was that now? A couple weeks ago. Two weeks ago. ago. Compared to playing this past Much weekend? Much worse the second time. Oh. Because I think I went a little harder. I think I tried. We played a little longer. We played a fourth match instead of just three. And I'm just getting clobbered. Can you play a lot less than playing for an hour 20? Can you play for 30 good. minutes? We could. 40 minutes? But it's, it's oddly difficult yeah. and i don't i don't like being bad at well, this. i tried i gave every suggestion possible there's i got nothing i left. think what i was hoping to say is you should get a new partner and you should quit <laughs> that, that's what i was hoping you're going to tell me just quit so demarco and kirk what do you think of that tandem right there demarco's doing what i'm doing demarco is playing every week yeah demarco is going to see a trainer he's getting in shape he's doing all those things they're yeah, the, as far as 710 goes they're they're the team to beat they're two professional athletes so, Kirk, we had him come on, talk about the football weekend, and we brought it up. We brought up uh, – Clinton and I brought up on Friday just, you know, hey, are you playing? What do you think? Tournament. This guy gave such an answer. He said, you know, right now we're just uh, trying to do everything we can to just get back in shape and this. I'm like, Kirk, this isn't – you're not playing for the Raiders, and this isn't a press conference on Sunday <laughs> leading up to the Super Bowl. Hey, those guys don't mess with – DeMarco's taking it seriously. Kirk's taking it seriously. I'm trying to take it – quasi serious I'm at least trying to figure out which end of the paddle to hold you should practice because you're gonna have to play a lot because I'm gonna be stuck in one spot <laughs> I'm gonna I figured out I need to get to the line you can't go in the kitchen yeah and I'm just gonna try to play I'm gonna play the front you're gonna be playing the back what if you wore at some point knee pads and just knee down just on your on one knee can I tell you just something? whatever you can get in you know what's super embarrassing but I'll tell you because I, I like everybody that's listening and I like you You know what the most challenging part of that stupid game is for me still? Picking the ball up off the ground. Because it's, you know, at the end of every point, ball's on the ground. Got to pick it up Mm -hmm. and start over again. So you you end up doing probably the equivalent. it's not like a tennis racket. It's not long enough. You got to bend over. You can't do that thing with a tennis racket against the side of your foot and flip it up. You can't can't do that. So you end up doing like 200 sit-ups in this whole thing, and I'm good for like one and a half. Is there like a pickleball scooper? Where it's, you could just put Velcro on it. We should we should make the court kind of like a funnel shape. So sure. we're all gonna just have like a vacuum tube that brings it back up to the surface. For all line. I know, we're gonna have ball boys and girls that are running and getting everything and <laughs> hey, handing it to you. That'll help a that lot. That'll help a that, lot. That, that'll well, make a big Travis, difference. someone just called he couldn't stay on the line to, to get on air, but he was like, just stop playing singles and play doubles. It's easier on your body, he said. Okay. For sure. We've talked about that and we're gonna be playing doubles, so I need to learn the doubles game. I need to learn the game for myself first before I can learn it with a partner. I have a it's process. the game within the game, Emily. I, I, Call I, him I, back. I'm just Call him back. Great advice. No, no, it's, it's great <laughs> advice, and I already have my second two people picked out when we start to go to the doubles yeah. round. But I, Write down his I number. I'm going to send him a text. I don't even know how to do it. It is a Bud Light reaction Monday on 710. We're reacting to everything that went down on NFL Championship weekend. And, of course, it is presented by Bud Light. Make your make Bud Light your game day beer. Bud Light, easy to drink, easy to enjoy. Must be 21 or older. Please enjoy responsibly. Have you ever gone to Las Vegas and not enjoyed alcohol responsibly? Because that's what we usually do, right? You go to Vegas, you go crazy. Uh, I have. Yeah. I've definitely done that where I have not drank 
This was a first for me. And I wouldn't say I'd not drank, but mm-hmm. very, very little. Okay, I've had... Have you ever gone into Vegas in the morning and left at night? Oh, like a day trip? Yep. I've never done that. No. Okay, so I, I've done a few of those, and... By doing those, I just didn't drink. Yeah, that's. But what about like you're there for a couple of days and I, not nothing. A couple but of very, days, very I, I, I'm I'm drinking something. Yeah, yeah, I'm drinking something. Had a couple of martinis, little old fashioned along the way. Is this at the very nice meal? It was very nice. It was Where, very what, nice. What'd you have? Tell us about the meal. Uh, we went to a place called Bouchon, which is uh, in the blah, 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 Venetian Hotel. Um, a little French bistro action. I had Ooh. steak frites, which is Ugh, a love. classic that is very hard to beat. It was, was, it, it was great. Was it similar or worse than Slee's steak, you think? It was probably, probably a little bit better. Probably, I think, I think Slee's got par. this down. I think probably you, on got par. It. Caramelized same shallots, had a martini. Why a every little... time you guys point out a restaurant, I'm on Yelp looking at pictures. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little steak tartare. Damn. We had, uh, yeah. 8,500 8, photos. It was it's a nice place. What did, what did Michael, what did Susan have? Susan had salmon because that's what she does, and it bothers me. Michael wanted the fillet; they didn't have it, so he ended up getting steak frites too. It's pretty funny. Yeah, that she gets lovely. salmon, and it bothers me. It does, she gets salmon everywhere we go. Mm. And, and look, I like salmon. I order salmon frequently. I like it, but it's a, the same thing like, can I, everywhere can I you, you go with salmon. At a restaurant, I never get salmon. Yeah, I and, and I, I was—we were talking about this last week. I. I, I like it. Every time I have salmon, I'm like, why don't I have salmon more it's great. often? <laughs> it's great. But if I go to a restaurant, I'm not getting salmon. I, I'm with you. I agree. She feels differently. Also, what was the what was She'll the fry fight. situation? Was it shoestring? Was it no. there's like skin still on it? It, it like... was skins on the very ends of the potato. Long, okay. long, skinny, perfectly crispy, fluffy inside, perfectly salted, and enough fries for the four of us to eat and have some left over. Do you get truffle fries when no. you get steak frites? Don't like I've gotten that, that sometimes, don't like but that. truffle is overwhelming. It's the only thing you taste. And it's the only thing you smell, too, which right. changes everything else along the way. All right, Venetian, you can't put all your own pictures on Yelp. Can I just get some from the people? <laughs> it's good. To go to it's, it's a good spot. I had a, had a very nice time. Um, Ten days for yep. the NBA trade deadline. The week Lakers from, made— uh, A week from Thursday. Right. Lakers made a uh, kind of a—I don't want to say an auxiliary move. A, a move on the peripheral, right? They got rid of none and some picks for Hachimura. It's been— you know, about what I think you thought you were going to get out of him. It was a, it was a very needed position. Yeah. They didn't have wings. They needed somebody that 6'8". That they needed that. Am I wrong, though, Al, to, to think that this is not going to alter the course of their destiny in and of itself? They might be a little bit better with him, but I don't think it's like, oh, wow. And again, it's early, but I haven't yeah. seen anything that leads me to go, oh, okay, this was the missing piece. I think the oh, wow will be AD, Braun. It's going to be all them. Now, the role players will... will I, I'm I'm a fan of Hachimura. I think he will be He's he fine. will help. But that it that deal didn't go down and everybody said, Well, the Lakers are the team to work through the West. I mean that obviously didn't no. happen. Yeah. Are they gonna try to do that? There was a thing on ESPN.com this morning about should the Lakers make a move and it's it seems to be fairly universal to do the best you can, but don't do anything crazy because there's no great players available. They're going to change it. Like, if you want to make a move mm-hmm. to get uh, Bogdanovich, for instance, sure. That, that yeah. sure, maybe, but do it at a good price. But this idea of, hey, look, we're going to go get a Zach Levine or somebody else that could really make a difference, it's not going to happen. So uh, I, think, I think there's a theme here from the Lakers' front office. Let me give you an example. Since they made that trade for Russ – um, it's not like they've made a number of other moves since the Russ move, okay? Mm-hmm. And they have, in a sense, and I believe them on this, let the market tell you what to do. And if the market is telling you that you just can't find value out there, and if you give up these two picks, which we even heard Palenka say this when they did the when they brought in Hachimura and they, they did the presser, I guess you could say pregame, whatever it was, Palenka was saying, these are our most important assets. We're not saying we're not going to give up the assets. We're saying we're only going to give them up if it truly makes sense for us, right? right? So I think which that, I think Which I agree with. Wait, that, wait, that seems to be the smart thing to do. And they've done that for a year and a half now. So I take them to their word that they're not going to just do something just to do it. So I, I say that because I think in the next 10 days, if I told you, you got these three options. What do you think is going to happen for the Lakers mm-hmm. over the next ten, 10 days? That, A, they're going to shop. Both of those picks will be gone in the next t- 10 days. Okay. B, one of those picks will be gone in the next 10 days. Okay. Or C, none of those picks um, will be shipped off. I think the chances of B and C are much greater than A. Yeah, I was A's. just going to say, in order of things I think are likely to happen, it's B, C, A. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. They, uh, but, uh, and even if they don't make a move, I wouldn't be shocked just because, again, I think it's going to come down to this. If the rest of the market and the rest – when you have 12 other teams in front of the Lakers in the Western Conference, they may be thinking, hey, let's go make a playoff push. There just aren't enough teams that are selling right now. I would love to have seen them just poke their nose in there a few times to let you to let me think, you know what, they're close. They've just been in that 12-13 spot the entire season. They can't seem to get out of it. I get everybody else's average too, but it just – it doesn't fill me with a great deal of confidence that that run is coming along the way. They just won two. You know one, what sucks? I'll tell you what sucks. I'm gonna go back to the game on Saturday. They were eight and five in January. Mm-hmm. Okay, eight and five so far in the month of January. Um, they've had good games against good teams. Whether it was um, the Philly game in overtime or the I'm just talking about teams that are in the playoff push. They beat the Kings one game. They lost to the Kings another game. They beat the Memphis Grizzlies. They've hung around. That freaking Boston game, I feel like swings the our conversation we're having right bit, now. Does, yeah. I feel like it changes a lot of that conversation. All right, I got pickleball advice that I need to get to. So thank you for helping me out. We'll we'll take those calls coming up in just a little bit. I guess uh the Sixers, not the Sixers, the Eagles. I was yeah. stuck in my NBA, Philadelphia. They're going to the Super Bowl. They had the best record. They were the number one seed. They've kicked the two playoff opponents' butts that they've seen. Why do I not think that they're a good team? That's coming up next. It's Travis Lee, seven.
reacting to everything that went down on championship weekend. Eagles Chiefs set for Super Bowl 57 and the Lakers. That East Coast swing, the Grammy trip. Right now, more of Travis and Sliwa on a Bud White Reaction Monday. All right, I need all the help I can get when it comes to my pickleball training regimen, which is not going well. My knees hurt. My why, By the way, the paddle weighs you know, 10 ounces, 12 Taking ounces. Out your shoulder. It, it's like I'm swinging a kettlebell. Like a cast iron <laughs> skillet. Yes, it's, what it, it's what it feels like. Let's go to Downey and Marcella. Marcella, you're on with Travis Lee. What's up? If you want to get rid of all that pain, um, take bare aspirin back in body. Um, there, it's in a purple plastic container. It's 200 caplets, 500 milligrams. Take two, and it starts working at least, for me, at 45 minutes to an hour. So depending on how bad your back pain is or your knee, it might take two hours, but take two of those, and they're actually coated. So if you have issues swallowing, no problem. No problem. Thank you, Marcel. Oh. So, Appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank and you, Marcel. And I'm watching you guys now streaming, so I, you guys are hysterical. Nice to see you, Marcel. How are you? Thank you. I don't know how long I, the delay I, is. Did, but... Does she work for Bear? <laughs> like, that was a very specific a commercial for a, they're plug. coated, they're time yep. release. Easy they're to gonna, swallow. <laughs> easy to swallow. Yep. It doesn't, like when I doesn't my, hurt your stomach. My mom Just eat two hours before. Yeah. She, my, mom, my mom, whenever I ask, like, you know, oh, should I get this? Should I get this? She's always very matter of fact. She's always very, like, specific. And I think that's always lovely. Thanks, Marcella. It, she, uh, she got your back. She got your back. I, I'm, I'm able to uh, mitigate the pain with drugs. That, that I know how to do, right? I know, I know how to. <laughs> Muscle relaxers work, too. Muscle relax. By the way, Slee. Have you ever his voice changed? Have, have you ever, um, by the way, Slee? Have you ever had the pleasure of a couple of muscle relaxers and a glass of wine? Because I would would recommend, as they say. I, I don't think the doctor would. But Probably not. Just do an edible and a glass of wine. Uh, it's different. I, I've, I've done that too, which is wonderful. Don't get me wrong. Wonderful. The the the. The muscle relaxers, you know, my back bothers me occasionally, and the doctor will give you a couple of muscle relaxers. I think you just it's, say that to him. <laughs> it's like they've taken every bone out of your body. You're just this massive softness. It's terrific. And your mind is all soft. It's just, it's wonderful. Did you guys That's see how you get through three hours of Babylon. <laughs> That's how you get through it. Yeah. What's Did you guys that? see DeAndre? He just walked in. He, no. he came in to fix the, the iPad or whatever. He's rocking all But he, he's in a Philly poncho similar yep. to the one that um, Jorge, Jorge has for the 49ers. And he just walks in. And, you know, I think I like how he's not, he's not going about gloating about being in the Super Bowl. You know, if you ask him, if you congratulate him or whatever, it's fine. But he's wearing the beanie, he's wearing the poncho, but he's not like, hey guys, I'm from Philly. The job's not done. Well, it's not done. Yeah, it's not done. I mean, did you hear Jalen Hurts yesterday? You know, it feels good. We're in the Super Bowl. It, but but his, uh, his singing was not that got great. Got some but... work to do. <laughs> but no one here hates Philly, right? Like, it's it, it, the 49ers, if Jorge were in here in 49er garb, yeah. they, they're the rivals of a lot of different people. If it's the Cowboys, everybody hates the Cowboys. People go, it's the Patriots. They're going to root against Bill Belichick for and all, the Patriots. For all we know, we didn't put a mic in front of him. We put a mic in front of him. What if he was like, yeah, you guys <laughs> like that? Could be true. Could be true. Where are the Rams at? Are you sure they're good? I'm not. They're 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 obviously good. I, let, yeah. let me rephrase. But I don't know if they are as they're that much better than it appears that they are with everyone else during the regular season. They went 14 and three during the regular season. They basically had their division and the conference locked up by December. Okay, so they could kind of cruise into the playoffs, get yep. as healthy as you possibly could. They got a really good draw in a, in a Giants team that they handled really well. Jumped on them early, cruised through that game. Yesterday, against the 49ers sleeve, Brock Purdy gets hurt basically at the beginning of the game. Um, Johns, Josh Johnson comes in, and he was over his skis, and then he gets, gets a hurt, concussion. gets concussed. And that game was a cakewalk. They haven't had a game like the Kansas City Chiefs had last night in a very long time. Yeah. Chiefs have been playing four-quarter tight games for a while. They're winning them all, yep. but they're in real games. The Eagles haven't been pushed in a really long time. So I, I don't think you can win 14 regular season games without being a really good team. Really, really good team. And th listen, did they have some stuff go their way? They did. Uh, let's forget about yesterday's game, last night's game against the 49ers. Um, when the Giants won their opening matchup. Against Minnesota? I thought Gi I, I know for me, 
I thought New York and Philly was going to be a good game. I thought, hey, you got a quarterback, you got a running back, you got a pretty good defense that it's going to be, I'm not telling you they're going to win the game, but it should be a closer battle than we thought. Yep. They ran through them. That game was over before the first quarter was done. Um, I think they're, I don't think you could do what they've done over the course of X amount of weeks without being a really good football team. Now, what you might be saying is, yeah, but they haven't faced a Kansas City Chiefs team or a Mahomes team. The problem or with the a Chiefs. Or Buffalo or a Cincinnati. Or they just they haven't had that gauntlet. Or a the, healthy Niners. The, except the 49ers, if they've mm -hmm. beaten the 49ers 31-7 to and Purdy played the whole game, it's like, yeah. okay, here we go. They didn't. They, they ran the single wing for half the game. You know what, what they could just be very fortunate with the timing of what's happening to yep. some other teams because I don't know what Mahomes is going to look like. I know that it helps that he's got an extra week to recover. I don't know what some of those wide receivers are going to look like, but if they're not fully healthy or as close to fully healthy as possible, I don't think Mahomes will be fully healthy, but close enough. you could very easily lose a game to the Philadelphia Eagles because they've been that consistent. I like what you said. I think that that's a really good way to look at it. You don't go 14-3 and three if you're not really good. You can't, you, right? You can't. You're, you're right about that. You're, you're right about that. That being said, when you watch them, especially in the playoffs, last night I thought, we, we can come back and talk about this in, in a minute. I thought Patrick Mahomes was as good as I've ever seen him in my life last night. Not because he threw for 500 yards or they scored 50 points or he completed 90% of his passes. It wasn't playing that. on one leg. It's playing on one leg mm -hmm. against a very yeah. good team yep. that had a chance to beat him and he didn't have his weapons available to him. He had Kelsey, but after the first half, Kelsey was pretty quiet. Mm -hmm. Wasn't completely quiet, but pretty quiet. He did that on guts. He, he made a huge mistake where the ball just slipped out of his hands felt like that was another one okay now the Bengals needed a break they just got one and they cashed in. and they cashed in mm -hmm. and that's when it felt like okay this is going to go and he stopped the bleeding and he was able to keep it together they get the ball back with 40 seconds he's on one leg and he makes a play with his legs like that that that's real high level stuff not that he wasn't awesome already but his awesomeness was, I can make every throw. I'm going to throw a hook shot. I'm going to yep. throw one underhand. Yep. I'm going to throw one with my left hand. It's like, I can't believe I just, this was just tough, gritty, high-level performance against a great team. Let me, let me give you a good example on this. I think sometimes these great players, you see them win one way. Yeah. And you see good. them um, take over a game because – hey, there's just no answer for Patrick Mahomes. Or Patrick Mahomes, when you think the defense is playing great, he got 12 yards, got that key first down on his feet. It's Patrick Mahomes. That's what he does. He won a way yesterday that we hadn't seen him win. And I think, you know, your point of— Except of, for he always wins that game. He always wins that game by how he won it. Yeah, differently. Right? That, yeah. that He won a game where, guys, I can't really use my feet. Guys, I can't really buy myself an extra two seconds in the pocket— I can't get that first down when the defense is playing perfect on the other side, but I got those six yards where I slid and got the first down. You took that element away from him. And what do winners do? They find a way to win. And, and I think coming into that game against the Bengals yesterday, there was a lot of money on the Cincinnati Bengals. There was a lot of money on Joe Burrow walking Almost into Arrowhead, Burrowhead, whatever they were calling it. The mayor of Cincinnati, <laughs> by the way, uh, yeah. relax, buddy. Let's let, let that I game be played first. I love that Kelsey first. called him a jabroni. That's amazing. <laughs> That's just amazing. I'm sure Cincinnati was like, can you wait till this game's over? But they, I mean, look, Cincinnati was running their mouth too. It's I was going to say, I don't know about that part. They, they seem to be leaning into it as well. But the fact that he walked away with that type of win, it wasn't 35 to 38. It wasn't no. Mahomes had, like you said, four touchdown passes, ran for one. 23-20. It was a 23-20 grinded out game, and Mahomes obviously a key piece of it. Right, I got a question for on you one about freaking leg. when you had a thought in that game. That's coming up next. It's Travis Lee, 7 
the martini at my dinner yep. on Friday night. You know, just once in a while, they just get it exactly right. It was one of those nights. It's one of those. Just per- cold. Perfect weekend. Put that, not the week, I had a very nice weekend. I didn't have the perfect weekend, but I had a very, very nice one. You kind of had a perfect weekend. Your story about Susan saving $4 to go to the other rental Four dollars times place. three days, so it's twelve. Okay, <laughs> my apologies. It was so far double remote lot. Hey, get on this bus to go to the remote car lot. That's it. That's any big size airport has that, right? We're gonna drop you off. There's a van waiting on the side. It's gonna pick you up. That's wh- exactly what it was. Like I get it. Big airports. Shady. Like if you fly into Eugene, Oregon, the rental cars are right there at the lot. Yeah. You walk outside. You get in the car. You drive away. At a bigger airport, Las mm-hmm. Vegas, for instance, you got to jump on the shuttle and drive for yeah. 10 or 15 minutes. What I had never experienced was, all right, uh, where's where's our – oh, no, no, no. You got to see that van that barely runs? You got to get in that with 68 other people and drive another 20 minutes out there to get your extra $3 off. That's what we did yesterday. So that was not a perfect weekend. You know what place I love flying into? It's just so peaceful. When I get into LAX – and I get to just figure out everything from there. There's something so soothing. I'm trying to So imagine if this is this is what happened. You fly into LAX, you get in your rental car and van, and they drive you to Inglewood. It's about what we did yesterday, okay? So they drive you from LAX to SoFi. All right? Fine. Yeah. And not there's no traffic or anything, so it's not yeah. so bad. It's fifteen yeah. minutes. Now imagine Nothing. if you when you got to SoFi, they said, We're gonna get you in another downtown bus LA. and we're gonna drive you to downtown. That's where our rental car was. And then you got to go all the way back. And, and of course, where we were on was the on other the side. other side. We basically stayed in Reno. It was it was on the far northwest corner of Susan town. Susan should have been. She that, should have had in cash twelve dollars. Just was, like ah ah, look at us. The hotel. The whole team was staying out there. That one was out of our control. But the rental car. It's like we could have. I, I could have bought a car for the amount of time that we spent driving around here. It just was. It was crazy. Let's go to. What's that? Did you ever buy a car? Never have still waiting. Still, yeah, still waiting. The right I, deal's got, coming. I got people on it. There, I got My people who got it. some uh, lines in the water. We'll find one. Oxnard and Jacob. Jacob, you're on with Travis Lee. Thanks for taking my call. I just kind of wanted to chime in uh, on the Eagles' disrespect. Um, you know, again, like like it was stated, you don't win 14 games by accident. But all season long, you know, every single win was always discredited. Once we had our first loss against Washington, it was, oh yeah, the Eagles are a bad team. See, they're not as good as they are. Wait till the playoffs start. Week 18, they didn't look great against the Giants. Once they played the Giants in the or the playoffs, it was, oh, watch, look, they weren't that good. Week 18, Giants will beat them. We annihilate the Giants, and then it's, oh, well, Giants aren't a good team. And then leading into the NFC Championship, oh, well, Brock Purdy's undefeated. Oh, the Niners got the number one defense. We end up demolishing them, and now it's more, oh, well, they had this, they had that. There's just always disrespect towards the Eagles this season. And it's kind of crazy how – you know, this being like a Ram station, I'm pretty sure you guys felt that last year being disrespected on everything that you accomplished, even winning your Super Bowl. You know, oh, this happened, so that's why you guys won. Oh, well, you guys had a super team. This is why you won. It's just insane that, you know, you're discrediting the Eagles, um, you know, for beating their opponents. No, and- you, Jacob, you bring up some really good points. And what this might be, you're, by the way, the comparison to the Rams, I think is spot on. So we caught a couple of breaks. Yeah, fine. We won the Super Bowl. And you don't win the Super Bowl without catching a couple of breaks. The yeah. Eagles have caught a couple of breaks. I, If the Eagles win the Super Bowl, he's exactly right, which is, wait, they kept saying this about nobody beat us. And especially if they, let's say they win the Super Bowl by 10 points, right? It's a fairly comfortable win, which is not totally out of yeah. left field. It's going to be one of those, why didn't we ever give them the credit they deserve? That we're looking for reasons to discredit them as opposed to say, hey, this is a really good team. I don't know if it's because Jalen Hurts is inexperienced or was. If it's because Nick Sirianni is not a brand name like an Andy Reid or a Bill Belichick or even a Sean McVay. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it is, but they keep kicking everyone's ass. It's a really interesting way to look at it. There is something about you know a squad that's – you shouldn't be a number one seed. You shouldn't be that good of a team and fly under the radar, and they kind of have. Right, like in a weird way. How much of that is hurts related? You think just and not that he look. He might win the MVP. He's been terrific, but he's not a brand name. He's not even a brand name like Dak Prescott. He's a better player than Dak Prescott. Second round pick. I think the fact that they just dominated all year because they did. What did they start the season out with? Eight and zero. Then they only had one loss going into week fourteen or thirteen or something along those lines. I think it was easy to just kind of not forget about them, but it's like, okay, this team keeps doing this. Yeah, but what about Buffalo? 
This team keeps doing this. Yeah, but what's Tom Brady going to do? This team keeps You're doing right. this. Yeah, what about Mahomes and Joe Burrow? And So you kind of spend a lot of time talking about other teams. Maybe this, the sex appeal wasn't there to the Eagles. But to play off of what Jacob said, I don't think it's a disadvantage that they've just done what they've done. And all you got to do I now is go win in two weeks. And who gives a you-know-what what anybody says? Is there an early line? Do we know what the line is yet? Uh, I can look it up. But yeah. I also have a question for you, Jacob. Are you still there? Yeah. All right, Jacob. So uh, I don't know Oxnard as well as I maybe do. So are there any polls you climbed last night? Where you, what what was your celebration like uh, as an Eagles fan? I just celebrated uh, with my brother, who's a Niners fan. You know, just <laughs> had to say, hey, you know what? Good game. <laughs> it you know wasn't as close as we wanted. Brock Purdy wouldn't have made that much of a difference. But hey, I, I for me, I was confident because if you watch the Dallas and Niners game. No, Brock Purdy didn't make any mistakes, but he wasn't amazing. He just right. He didn't take over the game. Garoppolo. He was Jimmy Garoppolo essentially. Just didn't turn the ball over, managed the game, and the Niners basically won because Dak Prescott threw two picks that resulted in about a six-point swing. That's essentially why they won. And so I wasn't as nervous. Of course, I wanted a good game, but people were making Brock Purdy out to be, you know, the next coming of Joe Montana for the Niners, and you know his past two weeks he really wasn't that great yeah he only had one drive last or last night but it was one drive one turnover and he was out so i wish we got a uh, chance to see it yeah you know that's that's that's, i think that's that's what it comes to more than anything else i wish we got a chance to see it. he said it and and he's like he wouldn't have made that much of a difference i disagree with that but it doesn't matter he threw four times right that's what it it doesn't matter that Mm -hmm. he they won the game he wasn't available he got hurt Mm -hmm. so there's there's no apologizing for it i don't think i agree with it wouldn't matter when when the defense knows you can't pass, sure. it matters a great deal. That I and they agree- got real weapons. The Niners have real weapons. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I I could be wrong about this. The Eagles could go into the Super Bowl and win against the Chiefs convincingly, sure. and I'll eat my words. I still think San Francisco is a better team than the Eagles. We'll never know because the Eagles kicked their butts. Mm-hmm. But they didn't play. They had their four string quarterback, and then played half the half the game without a quarterback. It, so it, we'll never know. So the, I'll, I'll but it doesn't matter. This. I was just going to say that I, I don't know if I, I actually thought when we were doing you know not even just our picks, but after the Niners beat the Giants the way they did, and after the the Niners um, or after the Eagles beat the Giants the way they did, and after the Niners and the Cowboys was actually a close game, I uh-huh. started leaning more towards the Eagles, but. We'll never know. They didn't have a quarterback, so I, I, there's there's no conversation to be had. I, I think the Eagles probably still a better team, but how the hell are we supposed to know? They didn't have a QB. They're in the Super Bowl, and San Francisco isn't. And when he said he was celebrating with his brother, I think you were celebrating in <laughs> front of your brother. At your brother. Yeah, I was going to say, your your brother was not celebrating with you. An he was Eagles celebrating and a Niners in fan in the same family. That's interesting. In Oxnard. Who knows? In Oxnard. I mean, hey. when, when there's no team. There was no team here for 23 years, 22 years. People yeah. are going to make other choices. That's right. the way that it's going to go. What's the but line? The, the line, as it comes out, it is uh, in favor of the Eagles. Eagles minus two. Are, uh, and it's uh, in terms of money line, it is Eagles minus 130. Sounds about right. That's not surprising. Yeah. I, 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 I would have thought Eagles are going to be a favorite in this one coming up. We'll see what changes. How, because of Mahomes' health and because of the health of the Chiefs, or you just think they're better? Um, I think a combination of all of it. Look yesterday, like we were just talking about, that might change. Let's see the health with the wide receivers. Let's see the health of Mahomes. But they were limping in that game to a victory against the Cincinnati Bengals. And it had, if you're telling me that Patrick Mahomes 100% full strength, he looks good, he's got his weapons, it's a much different game. But. You're less than two weeks away from the Super Bowl. I've done it too, but I just, I keep coming back to the Eagles. I'm like, yeah, you're good, but how? Just keep what winning. are they? They got just number one and number two defense. Were well, the Niners the number one? They, number the, one defense. They were the top two. I don't know who was one and who was two. That, but they were the two that, best defenses in football. That's another like key thing that we don't talk about, and it isn't that sexy. They play D. And that's what you need to win a Super Bowl. You need you need yes. good defense. You and need health. special teams <laughs> that don't mess it up for you, and you need a a good quarterback. Or you need at least a quarterback that's not going to mess it up for you. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of what the what the Eagles have, and it's what the Chiefs had. The Chiefs had, what, four sacks in that first quarter mm-hmm. against the Bengals? Like, they went after the Bengals. Obviously, the Bengals' offensive line is something we've talked about for a long time, but, like, the Chiefs went after it. So it's going to be interesting to see those two teams match up. So that book that your date had, let's go back to that for a second. Taylor went Wait, on Wait, no, date. the ramen. Come on. And well, she had, let, 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 let him get some of the details out, and then we'll go to the room. She had a book about 17th century child delivery. Correct. With illustrations. Illustrations. 
That's kind of weird. <laughs> I mean, like, just when you stop, I kind of, I kind of like weird. I, I, I do too. But like, if she were an obstetrician, an OBGYN, sure. You know, this is how far we've thrown me off a little bit. It would, it would have been a little. If she ball. were an yeah. L and D nurse, mm-hmm. sure. Maybe she's aspiring. I didn't ask her. <laughs> that that's just and aspirational. Sure. Like if you picked up a book on labor and delivery, the how sure seventeenth century. Like that, I'm guessing that's fairly barbaric. That it wasn't done in an operating room with masks and betadine all yeah. over people. Let's just hands. say we've come a long way. We've come a long way. <laughs> did you did you peep the uh, pictures? Oh, I was going through it. Yeah. And? Did you peep the price? It was in the expense. So in the last bookstore, they have like more expensive books. Like right when you walk in, it was it was in that that half the store. So. It was. Yeah. It was what? antique. So she's what? not good with her money. It's great. <laughs> well, what, what does she do? Are you? Can you tell us what she does for work? Uh, she works for the city. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I got a parking ticket that I got <laughs> six months ago. I haven't got a chance to settle it. When are you going out with her again? Tonight? This week, sometime, but we haven't decided on a date yet. So. I, I Look, you do what you got to do, obviously, but I'd really like you to take her back to another bookstore and see what she buys. What's like, the second book? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, if it's like a Stephen King, you're like, oh, okay, it's just a weird choice on the first night. But if it's another, like, medieval surgical <laughs> application what you got to consider. What if she, she was to a, rec- a record store and she gets like Gregorian chants or something <laughs> like that? Like you can't like you got to suss it out. <laughs> she's just she's into the rent. Is that no? The Renaissance was before then. Yes, Renaissance was seventeen hundred. I don't know either. <laughs> I, didn't pay, I didn't pay that much attention. I know the Read Dark book, Ages came book. before the Renaissance. I should I should borrow her book. I would have answers to these questions. The dump coming up next. It's Travis Lee seven ten.
we haven't gotten to today. Yes, it's time for the dump. Been meaning to bring this up to you most of the morning. Um, did you watch the video that Demar Hamlin posted? Did you get yes. this? Yeah. How great was that? Yeah. Like it, it was. It was. I don't know if you guys were following. There was this odd conspiracy theory that was floating around that because no one had seen or heard him talk, that maybe he wasn't as okay as everybody was saying that he was. He obviously is a hundred percent. Look great. He looked great. He sounded yep. great. And look, I'll be honest. Mm-hmm. I didn't know who Demar Hamlin was until that Monday Night Football mm-hmm. event. I had no idea. You know, if you would have said to me, "Who's Demar?" I I don't know. What an awesome guy! Like just such a, a heartwarming message. Yep. And, Looked like he might have had some notes. He'd glance down occasionally, but that was more or less extemporaneous. I couldn't have been more impressed. I also think he's somebody that is taking all the attention as best as he can and um, trying to take advantage of that platform and the attention to do good, right? This isn't just For sure. he's trying to recover and he's just trying to come back to the NFL. You know, it, it's, there's a bigger meaning behind it, almost like as if he feels like, hey, this is my here to path. Do something other I've been than chosen to do this. Yeah. You know, so it was. A, yeah. If you haven't seen it, I believe it's on his Instagram page, on his um, Twitter too. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 terrific. It's surprisingly lengthy too. It's a mm-hmm. solid five, six, seven minutes long, and he's a really special guy. I don't I don't say that very. I've come I've come to Al been doing this way too long to to kind of do the thing where oh no he's a good guy. I don't know any of these guys. They might all be great guys. They might all be monsters. I don't know. But that was just one of those things. I'm like, I really dig this guy. It was yep. very, very impressive. Happy birthday to our uh, mutual pal, MT. colleague, Michael Thompson, uh, celebrating his birthday today. I think, Mike, you know, we talk about guys you'd want to be, lives you'd like to live. Yeah. Michael Thompson, I think, has a he's pretty darn good, good life. life. I think he's got it figured out pretty good. Michael's got a good life. And he's got he's got kind of like the perfect balance as well. Doesn't take himself too serious. No was part of the 80s freaking showtime of the Los Angeles Lakers. Um, I love when he expresses how nervous he gets when Clay or Trace or things like that. And oh, by the way, he's got kids who are professional athletes. you got to kind of take a step. Actually, it was kind of funny. They um, Braun came on the broadcast after the Lakers beat. Who was? I'm trying to think. What was there? Memphis? Maybe Memphis. I can't remember off the top of it. Maybe it was Memphis. And... John and Michael are talking to him, and Michael starts asking a question about Bronny. And John is like, hey, if you need any advice from a father who's got kids yeah. that are professional sports. But Michael's got a he's got a good life, definitely a good life. They had a, they had a quick shot of him. They all love him, too. Like, you go to a game, everybody's just coming up left Listen, and right. They had a shot of him at the Lakers-Celtics game where they were kind of cutting through the crowd of you know famous faces in the crowd and whatnot, and they showed Michael. And underneath, it's a two-time NBA champion. You know, it's like, what a, what a great run. I uh, he will correct them and tell everybody he's a nine-time yeah, NBA yeah. champion. He I counts he all does. the clays, all the broadcasts, and two. the two of the Showtime. Era. Two, it's two. <laughs> um, the, the, I, I get the. I'm, I'll give him the clay ones before I'll give him the broadcaster ones. <laughs> and you gotta. He at least were responsible for clay. <laughs> you know, like you you mentored clay and all of those things. But I, you're right about that. When he talks about him and how nervous he gets, it makes me feel so much better because. My kid's just participating in high school sports. I'm holding my breath the whole time. It is so nerve-wracking. I can't imagine what it's like having your child in the NBA in or game in the seven finals, of the game NBA seven, finals. and just going all these levels. And, and you would think, too, well, I've played in game seven. What's the, you know, I know what it feels like. It's fine. He'll be all right. That he's nervous makes me Can feel Can I better. say something funny? Every time he talks about the all-time leading scorer of, or leading three-point uh, makes in one game is Clay, 14. Uh-huh. Is and every it? time you bring up that or the 37, whatever he had in a quarter, I'll give the three point. He's like, yeah, but you know what? He missed these shots, and he should have actually got to 17 or 18 and then put that thing out of reach. Now it's still in reach. I'm like, or I'm in my head, I'm like, Michael, I don't even know what to, how to come back with that. That's pro athlete-ish. Yep. Yep. That that's oh you you left it too close you should have done but I made ni- fourteen out of fifteen eh, the well, most made the fifteen of any three point shooter in the NBA history so we're getting close to twenty four hours later anybody want to give me a clear explanation on why the Chiefs just got a do over because when Jim Nance and Tony Roman are like I have no idea what's going yeah. on that the was it Gene Steratore is their referee in the booth yeah. he's like yeah. yeah I don't know what's going on either that no one knew why they were running that back for a solid what. 
five minutes, mm-hmm. and then they finally go, oh, that referee at the top of the screen came in, is coming and the in. clock wasn't running or something Nobody like that. Nobody knew what was happening. That was bizarre. So luckily, luckily, because yes. they ended up, they got a first down because of a holding. They did. But they ended up getting a, um, they ended up punting they, on that drive. It didn't swing the outcome of the game necessarily, but look, <laughs> I, I am a conspiracy theorist in the most – tangential sense i don't really believe in them for the simple reason i don't think people are good at keeping secrets i I think they get out simply because people somebody wants to say hey i gotta tell you this but you can't tell anybody and then it goes everywhere but it's stuff like that that makes you go what's going on i get it nfl rigged when when lebron james gets fouled like that and there's no whistle it's like hey i I get it everybody makes a mistake there are bad calls but what's going on you you can't you can't have those when those big games it's the AFC Championship game. The game's hanging in the balance, and we're just going to run a do. Du- when was the last time you so saw a do-over let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. This is actually a perfect example. I was rooting for the Chiefs, and I didn't really have a reason, but I, I don't know. Just watching Mahomes as he's battling through what he's battling, I'm like, I, I, I want I want to see the Chiefs win. When that redo happened, I felt dirty. And right at that moment, I'm like— It's a good word for I, it. I wanted—in I, my head, I'm like, I hope the Chiefs freaking punt. Do not tell me— that the Chiefs are going to drive down, and this is going to be the difference of the game. And then everybody's going to be talking about this. At least they ended up punting, but they got first down before that. Dirty is a great word, Al, because Felt look, dirty. I, I, we all want our teams to win, but there's a reason that a lot of us like sports and don't like wrestling. I don't want yeah. a predetermined outcome. I want it to be legitimate. I want it to be. I understand there are bad calls, but there are get to be times where wait, we're just going to give Patrick Mahomes yeah, a do over yeah. on third and nine. LeBron James gets clubbed going to the basket and no whistle? Really? Okay. Damn conspiracy. conspiracy. I'm all in now on conspiracies. <laughs> on this day in 2000, um, this happened. Probably the final play of the game. In regulation. It is caught by oh. Dyson. Can he get in? No, he cannot. Wow. Mike Jones made the tackle. And the Rams have won the Super Bowl. Okay, so you have walk-off home runs. You have buzzer beaters to win games. You'll even very occasionally have a touchdown on the last play of the game to win a football game. Very rarely. I don't know if I've ever seen a a walk-off tackle at the one-yard line in the Super Bowl. That was the first ever Rams Super Bowl championship, St. Louis Rams, yeah. obviously. Yeah. But that every time I see it, I'm like, I think he's going to get in. I think he's going to get in. Mike Jones saves the day. So that that's also one of those plays. The actual play, usually someone picks up yards, the yak, right? Yards after the catch. When he first catches the ball, I don't know how you feel, but for me, I'm like, he's getting in the end zone. This dude's getting in the end zone. One of the best tackles you can have in open field like that. All right, let's do a little super cross talk. KSBN AM 710 Los Angeles. KRDC AM 1110 Pasadena Los Angeles. K256CX 99.1 FM Pasadena Los Angeles. It's the greatest segment in LA sports radio history. Radio history. Oh my God. When the shows come together for magic on the radio. If Bologna grows stronger. Super Cross Talk. Are we ready for Mason and Ireland to join Travis and Slee? Super Cross Talk begins. Super Cross Talk presented by In N Out Burger. In N Out. That's what a hamburger is all about. It's time for Super Crosstalk. What's going on, Mace? How you feeling on a Monday afternoon? I am feeling just fine. How are you guys? Fantastic. Uh, we're waiting for Momo to come in here in just a little bit. Oh, she'll be along. She always is. She's a TV star. She's got to finish her TV stuff, exactly. and then she'll, she'll make her, her way over here. I saw her on the TV on the NBA today just a minute ago, so I'm sure she's rushing over. Okay. What's, uh, what's up? Not to put you on the spot, but, yeah. um, but we're going to put you on the spot. Did you happen to hear the story about Taylor's date? Taylor's date. Yes. No, I did okay, not hear a Taylor date story. So, um, Taylor, cr- jump in and correct me if I get any parts of this wrong. But yeah, Just gonna... real quick, they had ramen, but please <laughs> they, continue. I, you know, nothing wrong with ramen. I yeah. love a good hot bowl of ramen. This was the first date with this girl, yes? Yeah, first okay. date. So, they go out on a date, Mace, and at the end of the night, um, they're, they're downtown. They're here downtown, and she says, hey, do you want to walk over to the last bookstore? And Taylor says, sure. So they go over to the bookstore, and they're, they're walking around. They're Isn't looking at books. literally the last bookstore? Like, are there no others? Is this the only one? It's, it's just the name of it. 
Um, oh, okay. It's just the name. I thought maybe there was. No, there's more than bookstore. one left. Okay. Got it. <laughs> there's I, not I as many was, as there used to like be, but there's more. Lights than one. out for bookstores. <laughs> they're going to it's the one last the, one. It's probably the biggest bookstore I've ever seen. Okay. Good. Good. So they're they're knocking around the bookstore, and she picks up and, and purchases. Taylor goes in for a move. <laughs> nice. She she picks up a book and purchases a book on 17th century <laughs> child delivery. Oh, interesting. With photos included, <laughs> with, photos. With, with photos, Comes with photos yep. and illustrations of, like, 1642 cesarean sections. What are, what are well, the not photos, drawings. Drawings, drawings. Yeah. Yeah, illustrations. Sketches. Yes. Uh, red flag? No. Because uh, my response was, look, did you like her? Yeah, I like her. So go out. But this is one of those keep your eye on it moments, no? Well, did it spur a conversation? Like, there had to be some conversation. You like, know, I didn't even think anything of it until I mentioned it the next day to one of my friends. And they said, oh, that's Taylor kind of a, was okay with it. kind of a red flag, isn't it? And I was like, oh, I don't know. It didn't well, bother me. I don't me. know that that's a red It means she's interested in, at in least it wasn't reproductive a, history. I don't but, know. But she's not a nurse. She's not a doctor. She doesn't yeah. work in that field. It just seems odd. No? I, I guess I wonder why there wasn't some follow-up question. <laughs> like, why wasn't there, huh? Hey, what do you, what do you, uh, why what are you that? reading? What are you, what are you looking into that book for? I, I would think something like I, that. I'm might assuming because be Taylor said this earlier that for you, you were like, okay, cool. Yeah, you didn't and really... she's, she's into morbid things. It's just like one glance through her Instagram profile reveals that. And oh, uh, she's into morbid stuff. Yeah, morbid things. Give yeah. me another example of her morbidity fascination. Oh, uh, here, let me think. Oh. She's looking through her time. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Give me a second. Like, like Wednesday Adams. Send like... us a link to her Instagram and we yeah. will we'll break yeah, it down. Yeah, she's an alt girl, you know, like a... Just... Oh, she's, is she like an emo girl? <laughs> Not that necessarily, but probably in her, in her teens she Al, was. Do you know what an alt girl is? Because I don't. Mm -mm. Mace, can you help me? Alt girl. It's a girl who's like... Alt? I know. I don't know. <laughs> Emily? I, I mean, I, 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 okay, a I have an alt nation on my Sirius XM, but I don't know anything beyond that. Here's another example, Mace. So she likes to stay in hotels that are rumored to be haunted. Okay, okay. so she's right. got that. That's interesting. That's kind of cool. That's kind of fun. Does yeah, that bother you that at all, Taylor? Not at all. I'd love to stay in one. Does okay. she live in the Cecil Hotel? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the Cecil Hotel's the bad one they the documentary about. Oh right? yeah, that, yeah, have well, you watched that? Sleep? Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. You were in downtown Los Angeles. I would think that you would be. Around okay, the so Cecil. this is. You this guys want to go most... grab a drink at the Cecil real quick? <laughs> <laughs> they got a lobby bar over there. Um, this is the most important thing. It, for Taylor, it's not kind of none of this is no. triggering him. It took it's, it's it took a to me, friend the next day to say, "Hey, that's a red flag." I think Taylor. I think you're. I think you're fine. Does she have any ex boyfriends or husbands that have gone missing un unexplained? <laughs> well, I haven't heard much about those, we'll so I, I need to. Yeah. Well, do you consider yourself? To, she's an alt girl. Do you consider yourself to be an alt boy? Whatever that would be. I don't like to categorize myself. You know, I'm not trying to put a label on me. But... What an alt boy would say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the most don't hipster answer. Don't label me. <laughs> So yeah, I I think she sounds interesting. I would go down that rabbit hole. That actually sounds kind of interesting. It, it, it's very interesting. Second date's coming. It's very interesting. This week. Ooh, if she what do picks you do up for a second date. That's what we were talking about. Any suggestions for him? Uh there's uh, an immersive Frito Kalo uh Frida Kalo <laughs> exhibit uh, okay. over in uh, Hollywood right now. Maybe that would be cool. That's an excellent idea, actually. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. not bad. It'd be up her alley. Hey Ramona. Hey, what's up, guys? She's here. Phenomenal. She's ready. I've got the lashes. You, you've got the TV face. I've got the lashes. <laughs> they actually let me out a little early. It was good. Do you want to know the like the the choreography? This is this is the kind of stuff Behind I get I scenes? get excited about. Okay. So I know that I I forgot to bring lunch. So I, in the middle of the show, like it, during a commercial break, I'm like, let me order something on the Starbucks app. It's like 1230. But if I order it now, it will definitely be ready. Yeah. Yes. By the time that I walk over mm -hmm. there. Yes. So then at the end, it was like 1251. And they go, I go, hey, am I on in that last segment? And they go, you were, but we went a little heavy so you can go if you want. I'm Perfect. like, oh, excellent. Mm. So now I like really have time to stop and pick up the Starbucks. It was so crowded in there. And I just felt such a sense of accomplishment <laughs> that I had ordered so early that I was not late. I don't like, see. Like, did you already take it down? No, oh, she no got it's, food over right it's over there. Okay, I I didn't But see like it. there were so many people in that Starbucks where if I would have ordered like it, when I was walking over, it would not have been ready. Were you here? So you just get so geeked oh, yeah. for that? When, oh, yeah. When, it, so like, when the timing works out. When, and, life get, oh, when you get a little win, it feels good. That was a win. Were you the here? Starbucks app is, is foolproof. It, it is. is. It is yeah, such a great app. Yeah, except for when it's busy down there. 
That one I think is an exception to the rule yeah. because it's so busy. Yeah. Or it says they don't have something. What's and then going you go on down, down there? there and they, they getting ready it. for Grammys. I don't know. Grammys, it looked like kids. It's a Sunday, zoo. Yeah. Kids were there. Today. So last week they yeah. had that. What Teenagers. Was it? Like a hotel convention. It was oh like yeah. Hedge fund. Can everybody was wearing a suit down yeah. there yeah. last week? A lot of money down very there. Very underdressed. Yeah. That yeah. was. Did you hear the the setup to Taylor's story? I'll, I'll give it to you very. No, quickly. tell me fast. He went on a first date. They went to a bookstore. His. Where's a bookstore? Down here. <laughs> it's called the, the last, last bookstore. bookstore. Right? Yeah. Literally, okay. I know no, of literally. one. I, <laughs> he went to the bookstores, last Momo. bookstore. Capital L, not lowercase L. It's called the last bookstore. Um, and his date picked up a book on six, 16th, 17th century? One of the, yeah, 16th, 16th, 17th century childbirth techniques mm-hmm. and um, surgeries. Illustrations With included. illustrated... Old school pages, just like out of curiosity. That's yeah. Well, did you guys there, have there a conversation? There was no follow up conversation, right? <laughs> you just like let that one slide. I didn't think anything of it, honestly. <laughs> you were just like, oh, maybe it, she yeah. took a friend of him the next yeah, day to bring it up. She didn't pick up the latest Robert Ludlum. You know what I mean? Like this yeah, was yeah, it wasn't the, John Grisham. To me, this book. <laughs> I is mean, a lot. that's a major follow up question right there. Exactly. Like, do you have a? Fr- are you in this industry? Do you have a friend who is about to have a baby? Are she you- has eclectic she taste. Century. That's all I. She I has knew. A what? Eclectic taste. Okay. I think she sounds really interesting. More important, Ramona. I need a little had- more than just someone who might be into forceps. You know, like yeah. the. They had a good day. <laughs> medieval surgeries. Yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> aggressive. <laughs> I mean, medieval it, surgery. It's pretty aggressive. Well, I don't know. I watch House of the Dragon. The, like pretty much. <laughs> oh my that, God! That's all that they did era was have babies, of babies on that show. being birth with medical intervention didn't go well for the mom. Brutal. Brutal. Right. <laughs> I'm going to change the subject here a little bit. Okay. Ramona, help me with this. Yeah. Um, I I know the letter of the law answer to why. Okay, that you can't review a non-call and you've already used your challenge. Are y'all but, fired about the Celtics Lakers? Yes. Yeah. yeah. What, the, why in the world do we have replay yeah. in any sport? And and you can go back yeah. to the the Rams and the the, the Saints a few years yeah. ago. That's where that's where I was going to go. The, the 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 whole point of having replay is not to respot okay. the football by six inches in the second quarter or whose hand it went off of. It, it, it's to so correct how, egregious mistakes that alter the outcome of games. Correct. So Sliwa and I are the people who go to games a lot. You mm-hmm. go to more games than I do, even. Okay. And one of the really yucky frustrating experiences of going to games these days is that any game that is close tends to take extraordinarily sure. long in the last few minutes of a game because the coaches don't want to get caught with a challenge in their pocket at mm-hmm. the end. Yeah. Right? You got to use it or lose it. And therefore, like in the last two or three minutes, like they'll just review something so that they don't get caught. But then if you use it too early or if you use it on something and a play like that happens at the end... You can't you there's no mechanism to review so i think we're at that same point and by the way those reviews take entirely too long yeah they're like three that, minutes long that every time. Would have taken four oh, seconds the last the nba's of a take game the longest is like 45 it's brutal long. yeah. it's terrible for the viewing experience live and on tv and so i think the league the, the, this might have been such an egregious call that the league will now revisit this. The competition committee will re- should revisit this and say, all right, clearly that was a foul. It affected not just the Lakers in the standings, but, but LeBron's chase for Kareem all time. And maybe even more importantly, and I know we're all L.A. focused out here, but I had like people from almost every single Eastern Conference team watching mm. that game. Mad. Philly would have been in a tie Philly, with Boston Brooklyn, for best record. Milwaukee, yep. Yep. Everybody watched that game going, what the hell? Like, you missed that call, and now the Celtics don't lose that game. The Celtics end up winning that game. Th- that Eastern Conference race at the top is really close, and a game like that swings it. I- I- am I overthinking this, guys, that there should be – call it whatever you want, master of common sense, somebody that's just sitting there yeah. to fix that. Like we, Some because dude they're, they're, late they're, night in Secaucus, yes, New Jersey. Just one guy saying, guys, I know that technically you can't, but yeah. we, we, we had a huge mistake – he was fouled, put him on the line, he's taking his two shots, and we're going to play it out from there. With, yeah. that, I know that there's no rule for them, but just somebody that knows how to fix things. That needs to be fixed. The but the Rams question is, how do you fixed. create that match? Yeah, and, and like, how, how is that match? Like, you could say, all right, so... But how many, Mace, how many of those do you get in any given season? But that's season? on the refs. That's, you could just that's say the, the, last, the, the last two minutes of a game. We have the last two-minute report, okay? The last two minutes of a game, there's no such thing as a coach's challenge. Every, you know, that somebody in Secaucus has... 
the ability to the game is going to gonna take it. the game is going to take an hour in the final two minutes. But uh, that's the problem. I, I hear you, and I you're not wrong. But. I'm not talking about every time there's a maybe it was fouled. Maybe but was, they I'm, do this 38 times a about, game at the I mean, end of the game. This resulted in the actual outcome of the exactly, game. Exactly, Mace. It changed the you outcome of the game. Maybe the refs have a chance to do it. Maybe you give the referees. Let's take another look. Let's take another. Maybe the refs on the court. I guarantee you, those refs on the court. They knew they blew it within, in the moment. In the moment, they knew they blew it. I guarantee but that, you. They that's knew a it. bigger problem than. A lot they of people, should be able to get it right. A yes. Lot, a lot of people post game were kind of what you're saying, Trav, saying we should add another replay. Or if it's in the if you use your replay and you were successful, then you should you get should a chance keep to your just keep that, it. That makes sense. Mace, the issue I have is I actually do think replays were built for these bang bang plays that are very difficult to call and it needs a replay. Those were three referees staring at the same play that we all saw. I don't really have a solution to that. That is very, very poor officiating, and I don't think we need more replays to try to come up but with a solution. Well, I don't think it's ever going to stop. I think there's replays. a bigger issue here. I think there's a big overarching issue, which is that LeBron James doesn't get officiated the way other star players in this league get officiated. Um, he, If you look at his visits to the line, it's less than a lot of the big stars. Than the top eight and players. This mm-hmm. this was the top, you know, this happened in the Dallas game. At the end of the first overtime, LeBron clearly fouled, didn't get the call. It's like, why is LeBron James not getting calls that other players, other star players in this league are? I don't know that I would say that. I know what you're saying about his trips to the line and yada yada, but like every. I know, I, know, I, I didn't mean to throw facts out there, but okay. No, no, I know. <laughs> I, I don't know what to do when you have facts. It's weird. It's like throws it me is, off. It is. It's way, like it's what? Rare. <laughs> it's very rare. It's like. Uh... Wait, what happened? I generally, mean, generally talking on my ass. But I, mean, I mean, generally. This is facts. I mean, I think you could, but but you also that you have some selective facts which are not wrong. Which I'm proud of you for doing the look up there. Okay, <laughs> but there you could also say I could do the same thing with Zion Williamson or Joel well, Embiid well, or in, any in fairness, any big guy. Any well, big Shaq dude. Was the ultimate Shaq. This, these are two calls that would have resulted in two wins. For that that oh, that's I my two more wins. In Mace, the the, the, you and I are on the same spot on this. I'm not. What, what Al's saying is correct, but. This did it go off my hand or did it go off their hand? That we can look at that, and that is going to slow the game down and all those things. And I don't want a million of those. What I want is the game. The Lakers were going to win that game, and they didn't because three guys blew a call that they knew they blew. Because the way that LeBron acted, if you thought you got the call right, you tee LeBron up, right? That they let him throw that tantrum was admission of we know we blew it. They should be able to. Fix that. Yeah, NFL could, refs are allowed to get together after a fight yes. is thrown. Yeah, and I say, think that's pretty uh, common let's sense. Let's pick this one up. Right? Like, NFL refs are able to do that. I think all of those guys, at least in the moment, I'm pretty sure they knew. And then this is the other part of human nature, which is there's a last two minute report. And most of the time, it's going to come out later on in the last two minute report who got it right, who got it wrong, which calls weren't, blah, blah, blah. So, does that make you more likely to blow your whistle or less? More. Well, it's, I think it's more likely M- more. to make so you you'd get rather it right. make the call and have it be and have it be um, like you should. I actually think it makes you sometimes swallow your whistle, I, especially I, in Boston Garden I, where you're going to get booed. More. I would think more too. I think there's a little bit of pressure there to if I'd rather have called a foul because you could objectively say, "Hey, was that a foul? Is there enough body contact that?" Rather than not blow the whistle mm-hmm. and then you're sitting there. There's nothing you can do, and and you know obviously Those in that case for the for the Lakers, of course, yeah. that blew that game. Mm-hmm. I think they're much more likely to blow their whistle going forward. Yeah. But whereas if it had been the opposite, right? If they if he went up there and no one touched him and he missed the layup and yeah. they called a foul. That one is like, like there were so many bodies. I just couldn't see it clearly. That's just one I just didn't see right. This this one, I blew it. All three of those I guys hate the blew it. Reports. I don't understand what the, the – No, all it's, you're doing it's meant to put in there as an accountability. And the problem is like – What's the penalty, Ramona, for those yeah, three officials? Yeah, that's a good question. You get What's points docked. You know, like they, like you have a, um, a rating system all year long. So like, you know, Maze, like you know how we do a show and you'll be like, that was like an A minus. Yeah, that was like an A minus. That was a C. That was a this. What if you get a bunch of C's in a row as a referee? What happens to you? So you either work – They sometimes you get you work less and you're you're not going to get playoff games or you're not going to – you're definitely going to get it. Does it affect them financially? A little bit. Well, if you're working less games. Games, sure. Yeah. 
But you don't get an really extra meal on the flight. <laughs> the, the problem is, it, this is an incredibly thankless job, okay? Hmm. Um, they don't get paid enough to take the kind of abuse they do. Now you're under a microscope and under review, and there's so much writing on you that you have to we have to build a system where they can help themselves, right? Like where they're not like if they, I guarantee you within 30 seconds of them blowing that call, they all knew it Mm -hmm. and they had no way to fix it. I think it was almost instantaneous. I think it was one of those. They're looking around for the other yeah, two. Yeah, Bron's not going to react like that. Yeah, well, LeBron it, is not on the floor unless the ball is complete. Unless it was complete. Not like that. <laughs> not like that. I've not seen. Not like that. Not like that. Complains. Complains. He complains. Yeah, I don't know about That's that. That's beyond guys. complaint. I, I, what do we think of Patrick Beverly grabbing the camera? Yeah, and like showing <laughs> funny but unnecessary. Take a picture. I wasn't yeah. mad. Look at it. Yeah. You know, you want to be mad at a player for getting a tee. I was like, nah. That's I like fine. creative points. I'll get creativity. It's a ten out of ten. Timing was a two out of ten. Yeah. But I did like I did, I did like the uh, the attempt. That was funny. It was pretty good. Super Crosstalk is over. It is powered by In-N-Out Burger. That's what a hamburger is all about. Mason and Ireland coming up next. Momo's in for Ireland.